What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Valvoline, the original motor oil. That's right. Valvoline is America's very first motor oil brand. For 150 years, they've been innovating, creating, and reinventing motor oil. From the very first high mileage oil, to the first synthetic blend, to the first racing oil, they've never stopped pursuing innovation to maximize engine life. And Valvoline's latest innovation, Extended Protection Full Synthetic Motor Oil, provides 50% better wear protection than industry standards and is 10 times stronger against oil breakdown. Valvoline Extended Protection is specifically formulated with dual defense additive technology, combining an innovative additive boosted with a fortified detergent system. And why do you need it? Because I bet you're a severe driver. You might not think you're a severe driver, but short trips, towing, extreme temperatures, turbocharged engines, and heavy loads like a fully loaded van or SUV, and especially spirited drives, put extra pressure on your engine. Just ask people like Chris Forsberg, Rob Dom, Freddie Tavares, Hernandez, Speed Academy, Gears and Gasoline, Dustin Williams, and TJ Hunt, all of whom trust Valvoline in their cars. I love the history behind Valvoline as well as everything they've accomplished in motorsport. It gives me confidence that I'm putting a high-quality motor oil in my car. They're the only brand with a dedicated engine lab where they can run specialized and standardized engine tests right in their own facility. They're the world's number one supplier of EV battery fluids, offering tailored products to help extend vehicle range and efficiency. And Valvoline is proud to be the official motor oil of Hendrick Motorsports. Valvoline driver Kyle Larson was just crowned the 2021 NASCAR Cup Series regular season champion with nine wins and 2,000 laps led. So head down to your local auto parts store and ask for Valvoline by name. We're also brought to you today by Noom. You never heard of Noom? Noom is good. Here's what Noom is. Noom is an app that'll help you manage daily stress and anxious thoughts. Something we all want, but a lot of us don't know where to even begin. If you've listened to this show for any period of time, you know that I work every single day to manage stress, anxiety, and I've tried a bunch of different things. I go see a, a real a therapist, an in-person therapist. I've tried chemical solutions. I've read books, tried meditative strategies, and now I am in to Noom Mood. It's here to guide you to mental wellness and give you the tools you need to tackle stress so you'll imp feel empowered to take on whatever life throws at you. So it's one step at a time, right? So you, you start by going to noom.com slash tire. And there you do a very quick, straightforward questionnaire about what gives you stress. What makes you stress in your life? Is it work? Is it family? Is it your eating? Is it your sleeping? And you go through and it takes, I don't know, five minutes to get to the end of the questionnaire. And at the end of which, Noom provides you with a personalized uh, anxiety and stress reduction plan, right? It's just your plan, and it all it all a it asks of you is a, a one step at a time, a couple of minutes a day. There's a team of dedicated coaches, so you'll have a support system helping you along the way. It's backed by science. The lessons are based on psychological principles that teach you about your relationship with stress and anxiety. It provides you with a variety of tools and techniques to try out and discover. There's a new daily curriculum coupled with a one-on-one -on -one coach guiding and encouraging you on your journey. It's accessible and convenient, and with only 10 minutes a day, you can do it whenever or wherever as long as you've got your phone with you, right? Letting your stress control you, letting your anxiety control you is a losing strategy, unfortunately. I have dealt with this for many, many years, and you have to do a little bit of work and gain a little bit of knowledge and skills to steer yourself out of that hole. Now, because one size doesn't fit all, the personalized program helps, and you can navigate the program at your own pace with the support of a coach along the way right? You could help lose weight. You could help sleep better. You could help be happier. You could be a better husband, wife, child, parent, and taking care of your mental wellness is totally empowering. So by understanding your personal relationship with stress and anxious thoughts, you can take control, build resilience, and develop coping mechanisms that actually work. All you need is 10 minutes a day, and it's an app, so it's there for you anytime, anywhere. So, Worry less, feel happier. Sign up for your trial at noom.com slash 
tire. That's N O O M dot com slash tire. All right. Trust me, this is good stuff. Being happier, being less stressed is extremely, extremely clutch. Noom, N O O M dot com slash tire. And it's Policy Genius. They're back. Thanksgiving is coming, folks. November's here. I'm ready for turkey. I'm ready for taters. There's a lot to be thankful for. My family, my brother's doing better. And I'm thankful for the fact that Policy Genius can check if I'm paying too much for home and auto insurance. While your holiday calendar starts filling up, let those folks at Policy Genius get your home and auto insurance shopping done faster than you can still say daylight savings time. They make it easy to compare home and auto insurance in one place, helping you find home and auto coverage similar to what you have now, but at a lower price. They've saved customers an average of $1,250 per year over what they were paying for home and auto before. Think of the party you could have for Thanksgiving with $1,250 a year. They've saved new customers an average of $435 a year on auto. They've saved new customers an average of $350 a year on home. And their team at Policy Genius will handle the paperwork to set up your new policy or switch over your current one. So getting started is really, really, really easy. Just go to policygenius.com slash smoking tire, answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property, and then Policy Genius takes it from there. They'll compare rates from America's top insurers from Progressive to Allstate to find you the lowest quotes available. They can look for ways to save you more, including bundling your home and auto policies. If Policy Genius finds a better rate than what you're paying now, they'll switch you over for free. Their top-notch service has earned Policy Genius thousands of five star reviews across Trustpilot and Google. So head over to policygenius.com slash smoking tire to get started right now. Policy Genius, when it comes to insurance, it is nice to get it right. How about crowd health, folks? More than half of Americans are on a high deductible health insurance plan on the hook for thousands of dollars in deductibles, co-pays, and sky-high premiums. I know this because I was once on one of those plans. It was sort of the, I can't really afford good insurance, but I need to have some kind of insurance for if I get into a massive car accident, right? It's like the, the super emergency insurance plan. Those plans aren't great. And unfortunately, the only way I was able to get off that plan was to marry somebody. <laughs> Our system in this country still Dinks. Many people are concerned about the cost of health insurance, and there really aren't any good options other than marrying someone who works at a quality corporation with great coverage. You've got to either go insured, pay through the nose for a high deductible plan with questionable coverage, all because our broken health insurance system stinks. It's like being stuck with an old cable TV plan and not knowing that Netflix was a thing. So crowd health is here. It isn't health insurance, but it's a better way to pay medical expenses. Crowd Health is a community of people who are tired of paying into a broken system. It's a place where you can get a simple, flexible, and affordable way to pay for your health care. Being in the Crowd Health community can save hundreds of dollars monthly and put thousands of dollars back into your pocket. It's flexible. It's a monthly subscription, so you can start or stop when it's convenient for you. It's simple. They have an app, and by using it, you can find nearly any doctor in the country, ranked from one star to five star. And it's a, a community of health-conscious members who want to get healthy and stay healthy in return for lower prices. 100% of your monthly membership pays for actual health care costs, uh, helping the whole crowd health community stay healthy while keeping more money in your pocket. So Crowd Health is able to offer these amazing prices because of its community of health conscious members. But for a limited time, limited time, our listeners are getting their first month for free. And once you've been a member, Crowd Health will include a fitness wearable. That's 30 days to try it risk free plus the fitness wearable. So go to Crowd Health. Uh, excuse me. So go to joincrowdhealth.com/fit. That's joincrowdhealth.com slash fit and enter code TIRE at sign up. Joincrowdhealth.com slash fit. Enter code TIRE at sign up to get your first 30 days to try risk flip free plus the fitness wearable. Crowd Health is not health insurance. It's a community powered alternative. 
Terms and conditions may apply. All right, folks, on today's episode of the podcast, my pal Abigail Bassett is in studio. She is a extremely professional, extremely prolific automotive journalist. She got her start in television, actually on the producing side, and actually has an Emmy and a Peabody Award. You know how Abigail Bassett is a baller? Uh, because she, she said she had an Emmy and a Peabody Award in her website. Someone then uh, asked about it, and she said, oh, that's wrong. I don't have a Peabody Award. She then texted me two days later, and she was like, I forgot about my Peabody Award. So that's how you know she's a baller. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about her her start in the industry. We're talking about the Rebel Rally, which she just uh, completed, uh, and, and what that's really like behind the scenes. Apparently, it was a very tough year. And this was her first time off-roading ever. So maps, no GPS, uh, very challenging conditions. And I think it was an empowering conversation if you've ever thought about doing an event like this. It was very, very cool. And uh, we wander all over the place, but it was a pleasure having her in studio for this one. Abigail Bassett on the Spoken Tire Podcast. I have a weird thing about cars in that, like, the cars that I own or that I spend a lot of time in, I get really attached to. And like, it's like an emotion. Like, does, I, it grow, does it grow over time? It gets more? It does. And it's like almost like the more cantankerous the car is, the more oh. I get attached to it. Like, you know I had, Alana, right? You must be I friends with Alana. Alana. <laughs> yeah, this is, this it sounds like I'm talking to Alana. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, so I used to have two Volvo station wagons and one was a parts car. I bought them both in Austin and one, one became a parts car because the transmission kind of went on it. I mean, it, it needed a new transmission. When we moved from one house to the next, mm-hmm. I had to sell the parts car or donate it really because we couldn't, we didn't have any parking, uh-huh. right? We didn't have any space for it. I bawled my eyes out as if I had lost really? an animal. Oh. Like I was crushed. Oh. Poor did Nelson it have a name? Like, it did. <laughs> it had a name. So this one has a name. Her, it's, it's sort of a, she's, she's confused. I call her she, but her name is Stanley. Oh. Um, she came with the name. That's okay. There could be, it could, that could be a, you know. Yeah. It could be a, that could be one of those, like a celebrity could, would name their female child Stanley. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. you know, Stanley is, is fantastic. And the, the other Volvo was named Sika. Um, so <laughs> this is a really random, weird story. But growing up, I built boats with my dad really in maine um we built that's what you do in cedar maine. strip canoes really and like yeah um, that's pretty cool and there's this stuff called like from one log did you from call? strips oh of right cedar. Yeah. yeah so um hence the name cedar yeah. strip canoes right <laughs> that's like you're like a cooper at that point right yeah. you're like almost making like barrels pretty much yeah, yeah. you're steaming them and then forming them to a, a mold and then putting in little tiny penny n- nails and then you epoxy it and you put uh, oh. Fiberglass over it. How many canoes did you make? That's so I only cool. made one. <laughs> do you still? <laughs> is it? Do you still have it? Yeah. You do? Yeah. It's so cool. It's awesome. Is it's it here? A, is it in California? No, it's in Maine. It's in Maine. Yeah. Do you like go canoeing when you go home? Uh huh. We That's take it out. So delightful. It's pretty neat. That's got to be very satisfying. It's really cool to do because, like, you learn to do things that you, that are just really old craftsmanship stuff. Yeah. That you're like. And I really enjoy sort steaming of wood. That Who part. the fuck steam? Nobody steams wood It goes in like a big anymore. steam box. It's really? Pretty cool. Oh, that's awesome. But um, we named the, or I named the old Volvo Sika after this stuff called Sika Flex, which is essentially like an epoxy mm-hmm. um, that you use in boat building. Um, it's used in a lot of wooden boat building um, because it's, it gives this like gorgeous the finish. The shine, right? The clear. It's like it, lo- it looks like it has like a gl- th- thick gloss on it, right? Yep. I've seen this on the wooden boats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and. Uh, it's probably super toxic. To oh, it's shit, terrible. Right? <laughs> you can't. You have to have like massive ventilation. Yeah, you have to yeah. have all kinds of like. It's it's not you know not exactly environmentally friendly, um, but we just named her Sikaflex because you know she had a lot of dents and there were a lot of places that needed to be like Sikaflexed yeah. over. Not really, but in theory. Did your did your parents build more than one canoe? Do you have a, like lots of canoes? So my sister and my dad built one, and I, uh, me and my dad built one. Who's um, this better? I mean, mine is, of course. <laughs> no, my sister was never really into that sort of thing, really. She just, she's a very different animal from <laughs> me. Um, she lives in Manhattan and has this incredible life. And I, you know, she is absolutely my best friend, but we're like, we've become she's very She's like Carrie people. Bradshaw and you're, you're like, you have Volvo parts cars. Yeah. <laughs> she, she is the one who is like a, I think she's a vice president of, of women's bottoms at, at like design oh. for, um, 
oh my gosh, New York and Company. Oh yeah, she's been there forever. She does a lot of their like celebrity collaborations and oh, stuff. That's um, a good gig. She's super talented. It's very high fashion. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I mean. That's probably who like Hannah Elliott would have been hanging out with in New York. Yeah. For sure, right? Back in, before <laughs> sure she moved out here. Yeah. I'm sure of it, yeah. Her I, house I want to race you in Cedar Strip Canoes. Okay. I was canoeist of the year in 1992, <gasps> Camp Wampasset. My J-stroke is ill, son. Really? Yeah, I really was. That's rad. I love canoeing. That's I was rad. really, really, I used to go on like long, like, you know, when I was a kid, it seemed long, 30, 40 mile you know, up the river kind of canoes and camping, the whole deal. That's so cool. Yeah, canoeing rules. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. It's awesome. I, I'm ca canoeing over kayaking for sure. Yeah. So I never I, really got this move, but I always could relate to a good J-stroke. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Where yeah. Was it lake or river? It was la a lake in Connecticut that had like a, a river that went like off it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I forgot that you're both, you're also from Connecticut. Yeah. I, I went to high school in Connecticut. Which high school? Weston High School. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's that's very Connecticut. <laughs> that's as con that's about as very Connecticut. Connecticut. It, o only if you went to Greenwich High would you be more Connecticut. You're or Darien, kidding. maybe. You're not kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you were Darien, you'd have been here in pink pants. It's true. For sure. Yeah, maybe with You'd like have actually a, sailed here. Right. Like little lobsters, <laughs> perhaps, something, you know, yeah. it'd be really cute. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just went to a Cars and Coffee in New Canaan like a month ago. It was great, actually. C uh, caffeine and carburetors, I think it was called. Yeah. And it was a really good Cars and Coffee, but it was it was so Connecticut. <laughs> just the state of dress oh, was yeah. so Connecticut. It's very Connecticut. My yeah. sister loves Connecticut. I am Connecticut was not my not my bag. I we moved when I was like 13. Mm -hmm. So like you're at that age where everything sucks, you yeah. know. Yeah. Oh yeah. And 8th grade, middle of 8th grade moving to Connecticut where I went from California where I was like one of a thousand kids to Connecticut where I was like one of 80. I yeah. was like I hate You know this. when Connecticut really sucks when you're 23. Yeah. I went there after college to like my parents' house for to have a make a career for myself and whatever. What a dull fucking place when you're 23. Oh. It's terrible. Can I move? Yeah. What do you want? I just want what to are you trying to do? Lower? Down a little bit. Um, the, you use this that guy one? here. So this guy will loosen, and okay. then you can just kind of, yeah. And then, Perfect. Is that cool? Yeah. We need better. a tool to actually move the no whole problem. arm. Is I that figured, okay? Yeah. I just, right. I'll sit up. It'll help you, me sit up taller. You might be able to raise the seat. No, the left I'm actually hand. good. All right. I'm, we just raised the table. It goes Three, up. It's on. No, it's on. We put risers on. Oh, <laughs> Johnny Lieberman feats of strength to the table. Yeah, and I'm we sure put risers on it because it was too low. I'm now. I'm like, I love the height of this it's table. Perfect. I'm so excited. This it's is fabulous. Like lovely. <laughs> I love it. But uh, you're also like, you know, it's so like hot right now to be leaving California for Austin, and you like came back. I did. Yeah, I did. Why'd you guys come back? Um, actually, at the time, Nelson got hired at Automobile oh, Magazine. Oh, okay, yeah. So we moved for the job, oh. and then. I had this sort of crazy idea that I needed to have a full-time job because everything was so expensive here. Mm -hmm. And you know, freelancing is feast and famine a lot. Um, so I ended up at Edmonds for a year and then left that, thank goodness. I was not, it was, it was a bad fit for me, um, but I still love everyone there and they're some of the best people I've worked with. Um, but uh, we have actually been here now I guess five years. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a while. You didn't just come back. From no, yeah. we've been here about five years, um, but we have been in like three different houses in five years <sighs> because the rental market here is for yeah, the birds. It's it's a bit of a problem. It's a thing. <laughs> what got you started writing about cars? So, kind of going back to when I was still at CNN, um, I had an old boss who was probably one of my most favorite bosses ever. Um, he was one of those people that would look at you and be like. I trust your instincts. I trust your decision making. I will back you no matter what you do. And at the time, it's very common these days. <laughs> I have never run into a boss like that since, uh, except me, maybe, and I'm my own boss. Yeah. You know, so like that's about it. Um, but he was really rad, and and he, um, we had just started some of the automotive coverage. Um, one of the reporters there was just starting to get into it, and he was like, "Will you just please deal with this car stuff?" And I was like, okay, I don't know anything about this part of it, you know? I mean, I kind of grew up, my dad is a big influence in my life and, and you know, I'm lucky enough to have parents that have been like incredibly supportive of like my weird <laughs> interests in mm -hmm. life. So as a kid, my dad was like, this is how you replace your stereo in your car. This is how you change your oil. Like he was very hands-on in that. And so I had enough knowledge to be, you know, moderately dangerous and I had done 
a driving school or whatever with him because he really liked cars. Like racing school? No, it was like a, I think it was a BMW driving school oh, yeah, okay. kind of thing. Yeah, not, yeah. not so much like a Skip Barber or something mm-hmm. else. Um, and he was like, we're going to just teach you good good methods for driving. You know, keep your eyes up, look ahead, all that stuff. And um, Those are good programs. Yeah, the, they're really the good. The stuff that, that teaches like teens, like just good habits. Those are good. I did one of those when I was a kid, and it was it was good. Yeah, they're really helpful because you know, and it's the driving situation has changed so much in the last. You know, I'm 42, so the last like 20 odd years. Yeah. Um, just the way we drive and how, how we drive and why we drive has changed so much. Like, it's almost like you need a refresher every once in a while. But when I was at CNN, I started helping out with the automotive stuff and just really liked it and um, enjoyed the new vehicles because I had been in kind of older vehicles as exemplified by the car I drive. Yeah, she rolled up in a 1989 Nine. Volvo 240 wagon. Yep, that needs a, a paint job. With a little bit of a fade going on. <laughs> Desperately yeah. needs a, fa- a yeah, paint job. Fade like G Easy. Yeah. It's, it's really. Uh, we got the primer it's showing classic. through. Classic. It's pretty mm-hmm. pretty rad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if I had I had to ask if it, if you were driving it ironically or oh, no. seriously. <laughs> I drive it seriously. Yeah. I, it's it's a car I love. Um, it was the first. Well, not that one, but I I learned to drive on a two forty. I mean, um, as I can imagine, a lot of people of our age group yeah. did. I there was a there was in in my Jewy private school there was a lot of late model two forties. Yep. All the kids with really like practical parents were, <laughs> exactly. handed, were handed down a 240 wagon. Some of the really, you know, practical but a little better off ones, they got like the 93, like the last edition with the really nice flush headlights. And like, I was like, oh, oh, yours is the final edition, I yeah. see. Yeah, yes. exactly. You have the, like the nice badge. Yours has an airbag. Yes. <laughs> Mine, not so much. I mean, Still, it'll be that car and the cockroaches, though. Yeah, there'll legitimately, be, there'll be nothing left of the world, and the, that Volvo will be chugging. No, it's been it's got one hundred and fifty thousand miles on this odometer. That's low. Oh, Who this knows odometer. How many? Yeah, <laughs> I think it's had its odometer. It also replaced. might be one million one hundred and fifty thousand uh-huh. miles. You never know. It just, it's flipped over. It's yeah. fine. Um, but yeah, I that I, my dad taught me to drive in the snow in that. Mm-hmm. We put sandbags in the back, and we'd go up to the middle school parking lot, and he'd teach me to do donuts, and he just really encouraged that stuff. So. That's quality. That's a cool guy. That's a quality <laughs> dad. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a quality dad. You know. And those cars actually have pretty good uh, dynamics in loose surface. They're, They're not, not bad. terrible. Yeah. And occasionally, they rallied them things. Yeah. Some of the stuff like you see on on social and stuff, you can see some of the old ones rallying, and it's pretty yeah. rad. There's um, like there's ones that have like the they're the two door ones, obviously, but yeah. proper rally heritage. Yeah. Uh, like the two four two turbo rally cars are fucking beasts. Those things rule. Yeah. Not even look at that thing. It's Not even amazing. ironic. Look at the yellow and blue one. I that know. shit is so fire. Wow. They look great. I, I mean, love that's, them. They look just at that. Make me happy. That's fabulous. <laughs> and that that photo is from Bonhams. Yeah. That's probably. I wonder what that sold for. Can you see? What, there you go. <laughs> yes. Look at these things sideways. Yep. Ripping. I love a fucking. Occasionally, I accidentally do that mm. when it's wet in L.A. You know, you pull out it's of a best. parking <laughs> parking lot too yeah. fast, and all of a sudden you're like, Woo-hoo-hoo. Yeah, Hello. it's yeah. slick as shit yeah. around here when it, when it rains, right? <laughs> yeah. I used to drive like a shit bag in my Ferrari when it was in my Ferrari, in my Safari 911 when yeah. it was wet, and of course, you know. You shouldn't drive irresponsibly in the rain, no. but as a casual observer, I can say that cops are pretty fucking lazy in the rain, and they stay in and do paperwork. Yes, <laughs> so exactly. If you yeah, ever were going to slide an entrance ramp, <laughs> the rain is a good time to do it. The rain is a perfect time to yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I've, I've accidentally come out of a, a parking lot a couple of times a little too hot. Um, <clears throat> just kind of put my... not All, the, all 120 uh, of those yeah, I horsepower. Say, I think it's down to like maybe 100 at this point. We should dyno it. We should see how many <laughs> of the horses have escaped. I think there's been a few horses that have escaped. It's an auto, right? We're down, yeah. yeah. We're down to, um, I joke about this, but we're down to like squirrels. We've downgraded <laughs> from horses to squirrels. squirrels. <laughs> there's a dude, who was that guy, who was that guy in, down in San Diego, Zach, that tunes the fuck out of those 240s? We worked with him before. Ooh, he makes real power out of those Volvo motors. They're incredible. Oh, what the hell is it? What's his name? We'll find it in two seconds with the Google machine and don't know. Mm. We'll find it. He'll find it. I don't know. But it's it's got some it's got some really kitschy name. It's like moose, moose something, or it's, you oh, know, that's Volvo, cool. yeah. yeah, something with a, with a moose in it. Well, I we're think. always but Volvo enthusiasts are strange people too. We we yeah. really like our our weird cars, and 
They have um, a really good sense of humor. We do. I think. I think so. I mean, I don't. I actually haven't really gotten involved in sort of the the Volvo groups um, here in Southern California because there are quite a few. Mm-hmm. Um, there's lots of survivors here in terms of the vehicles, and they're really easy to work on. Yeah. Mm, they, well, there's like it's a it's not a big engine. No, it's an enormous it's engine, engine bay. bay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The engine bay is like the size of a Nova, but yeah. it's got a little four cylinder yeah, in it. Yeah. It just cranks along. Yeah. Um, you know, I've I, there's a few things on that car that I need to do, but. Um, First, we need to get another car so that we have one that's street legal. Because right now, it's my only street legal vehicle. In so how many vehicles do you have? Oh gosh, between Nelson and I, here we go. We have uh, five. If four we used of to have which six. are not street and legal. Four are not four street legal. Not street Is that because four are race cars, or four oh, are just not ready to be on the street because they lack wheels? No, they all <laughs> have axles. wheels. They all have axles. They all run. Um, they're just not smogged. Oh, okay. At the moment. So they're yeah. just parked. This um, is a solvable problem, Yeah, I think. So we have an F-250, um, which I think is a, he told me this morning, because I can never remember this. This is his dad's. You had to write notes on your I own I had to cars? write down on what, what year, his, it's like I have a mental block uh. against what year his his truck is. It's a 1994. Oh, okay. Um, and then we have his dad's 994 Turbo, which is an 89. Oh, 964 Turbo. Yes. Yes. Sorry. That's and the then, first year. Yeah. Eighty nine. No, 80, no, eighty seven. Oh, eighty seven was a uh, is a is a is a just a, a, a turbo like a nine eleven turbo. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, that's it very good. Needs some work, but it's in the garage, so it's it's you know it hasn't been smogged in a while. And then he also still has his Miata that he's. Had oh forever. yeah, the Miata, right? Yeah, he uh. was he Nelson was doing a lot of um, autocrossing, and so that was his autocross car. I did a little bit of autocrossing with him, which was fun. I recommend the F250 for yeah. your next mm-hmm. autocross. Oh, man. I was scraping egg off the F250 yesterday. That oh, was fun. That's so sad. I love Halloween. I, oh, is that Trick or Treater did it? Well, I guess not Trick or Treat yet, right? It's mischief Night, days. bro. Yeah. Mischief Night? Yeah, isn't, that isn't the that? night before Halloween? It's usually the night before. I thought yeah. it was just Halloween. That's, that's no, I, some... we, we used to do Mischief Night. It was it was the night before. It was dumb. Yeah. My, my Me and my friends were incredibly destructive on Halloween. We oh, used to really? blow shit up. We used to fucking blow up mailboxes and shit. Really? And yeah, yeah. We were just really destructive. Destroying a mailbox is a felony yeah. offense. Yeah, it is actually. Yeah. It, I yeah. But no one really tells kids that. It, like you see a movie when you're 15, you're like, oh what? I didn't know. Oh shit. <laughs> we used to take an an M80 or a pineapple, yeah. which is a, which is a bigger one, because we could go to Chinatown in New York City and we knew where to get them shits. Yeah, of course. And you would you would duct tape it in between three cans of shaving cream. When you lit that up, it was immensely powerful. And not just one round of duct, lots of duct tape. So you get compression. You'd get compression, and it was immensely powerful. It was very, very dangerous. Would you go for the ones where like they were like embedded in concrete? Oh, like the brick. We we did that once, and we fucking destroyed one, and it was it was. I mean, we made a bomb. I mean, straight yeah, I up. I mean, we that's made a what bomb. you were was, making. Yeah, it was not good. We weren't. We were not good. <laughs> good children. Oh, it doesn't so, sound like it. And there was eggs. And there was toilet paper. You made like a weird 14-year-old atom bomb be- or hydrogen bomb because yeah. the firecracker was, was basically like the, the igniter system yeah. for the compressed the air yeah. and the shaving yep. cream. Yeah. And, then- <laughs> and for the record, I didn't physically make it, but my group of friends was was incredibly destructive. And we had the anarchist cookbook, and we fucking went through it. You we made it. napalm. <gasps> we made those those little um, the tennis ball bombs. Remember yep, them? Yep. Where you'd break the heads off like a thousand matches yep. and fill a tennis ball with match heads. And when you would huck it at something, it would explode. Yeah. Whoa. Never heard of that one. That's cool. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't ever do, do that. that. Don't do that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You ever light a ping pong ball on fire? No. Very hard to put out. We learned really? that. Yeah. The you'd plastic? Light, yeah. You'd light the fucking ping pong ball on fire, and it would fucking make us like a sun shower. And you'd take a ping pong paddle and whack the flaming ping pong, and it would stick to whatever you hit it against and burn. It was really dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, we were bad, bad That's, kids. Wow. And this yeah. was in Connecticut? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they they were not prepared. No. It was like, like, <laughs> like we had just started listening to Marilyn Manson. Uh-huh. It was like his first album. Yep. It was not good. The beautiful. Honey, people. I think the, the insurrection people. is outside. Yeah. It was not. We were all, we were like, there was like goth kids. It was, it was really a wow. thing. Yeah. 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 I don't recommend doing it. I was not, I was not so much of a troublemaker in terms of, of Halloween. That was not my thing. Um, I, you know what it was? My parents were like, you're too smart. We're going to make you swim all that energy off. So I oh, swam. You were a and swimmer? It was, yeah. I swam. That's I could like swim discipline. before I could walk. 
basically. Did you have to like get up at 4 a.m. to do two hours of swimming practice before, before school? school? Yeah, wow. the, the swimmers were always like, they're like, oh, you think you fucking the football players have to practice hard? <laughs> I got swimming, swimming before and, and after. after. <laughs> Shit. The swimmers always had to work Ooh. so hard. There was a lot of time spent staring at the bottom of the pool. Yeah. I never understood the, that level of drive for swimming, but I mean, it, it, it seems like it was very zen, I guess, right? That was the thing. I, you know, my mom used to joke with my sister and I, but mostly me. She'd be like, you need to go swim because you're driving me absolutely batshit crazy. Like, get mm-hmm. out of the house. You're making me nuts. And then I'd come back from swimming and, you know, eat an entire refrigerator full of, like, whatever was there and drink an entire, like, 7-Up thing or whatever. You just burn, like, 3,000 calories in the pool. Yeah, I mean, yeah. without even thinking about it. And then I'd be like, Mom, I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's yeah. like, you are a monster. Go you know, now swim. that you mention it, my most destructive friend, the one who built all those bombs, was not was an extremely accomplished swimmer. Yeah. He had records, like yep. junior Olympic records. And yeah, he, he he was very, very accomplished swimmer. A lot of the swimmers generally, that I knew anyway, were the troublemakers as well. Because they funny. were also, because like, you know, in Connecticut, it's not like other places in the country where you can, you swim year round, right? Like California, you swim year round. In Connecticut, you have seasons. Mm-hmm. They have, or I don't know if they still do, but they used to have girls season, which was in the wintertime, and then boys season, which was longer. And it was from like, you know, like Christmas time until summer, yeah. basically. And for me, my coach was like, you're good enough that I want you to swim year round. So you have to swim on the boys team. You have to compete on, with the boys. I used to just, I mean, that's part of like, it's also part of the car thing, right? Like being the only woman in a room. Yeah. A lot of times when you're dealing with, you know, lots of machismo and on occasion and you're just like, all right, I've, I've been here before. I know how to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've, I've, we were just, before we started, we were talking about like how you and I could perceive the same person totally yeah. differently just because of, you know, how that, either how that person acts around men versus how they act around women or the signs, yeah. you know, that, that you would look out for that someone like me would not yeah. look out for at all. Just like, okay, I know, I know how to gauge this. Yeah, I can yeah. handle this. Yeah. Did that in, in, in the early, I mean, when your boss that you liked at CNN made you the car person, yeah, was that an issue there? And or not an issue, but like, did it feel like being the only woman in the room, or was it because you were at this the TV network and not like going on press launches like a freelancer that it wasn't really that? Yeah, so we did do a couple of, of press launches, and the way that it works with with major outlets is that you pay for your own way, right? So you mm-hmm. pay for your flight, you pay for your hotel, you pay for your food, all of it. And um, the few launches that I did do with the reporter I was working with. Um, Were you I, the producer? I was producer. Oh, okay. Yeah. I started out as a producer and then I started doing some on camera stuff for car reviews um, for a little bit. And then they, CNN, like most media companies, did like one of those big like mass layoffs and they laid off our entire group so that they could bring in a whole bunch of other people. And they were like, we, we really to pay want Wolf you back. Wolf Blitzer's salary. Yeah. You all need to go. <laughs> no joke. He'll be doing like, the car reviews. Yes. Oh my god! <laughs> oh god! And from from Washington D.C. no less. Yeah, you know. Um, but yeah, they. Um, I. It was never an issue with like being sent on these events. Um, a lot of times, what would happen is I would walk into a room, you know, and people generally would know who kind of have an idea of who I was, um, just because. I am the only woman in the room. So it's like either I'm PR or I am here to cover it. And a lot of times people would mistake me as a a PR person, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And that was okay. It was just and then then they would discover that I was actually like, okay at this. (laughs) Like, I actually kind of knew what I was talking about. And um, that really, really changed a lot. Like I have, you know, it was funny because at the time. When I got into automotive stuff, I was going through a gnarly divorce. I was going through like a bunch of personal stuff. And a lot of the people that I met in the business, both on the PR side and on the journalist side, um, and just at you know different automakers were incredibly like supportive. And they kind of looked at me like, you have so much to offer. Like, this is, what are you doing? Like, why are you not doing more of this? And that to me at the time was just like such, it, it, it you know, to, not downplay it, it kind of saved me in a lot of mm-hmm. ways because it was like, 
I found this thing that I like. I actually fit in because yeah. I didn't fit in. There's a club. Yay. Yeah, like I belong here, and people think I'm kind of okay, and that's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that probably is good when yeah. you're in the middle of like traumatic experience. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend getting divorced. No, mm. I'll make a note of that. It's very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it's very expensive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, house payment expensive. Yeah, like well, you don't have, you don't have kids though, right? No. Yeah, so luckily. that would be. Yeah. substantially worse. Yeah, you know, and that's another thing that I'm incredibly grateful for was because I was just like, I do not want kids. It's just not, you know, I don't have any problems with kids. It's just not my thing. I have problems with kids. Do you? Yeah, no. other people's. Yeah, other people's kids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. They're just, you know, they're they're great little human beings, but it just wasn't my path, and I was okay with that. Dude, and, I'm with you, 100%. Mm-hmm, you know? My wife and I are on the fucking party house train right now. Yep. We're like, you know what we could do? Yeah. Do you know how we could spend our money? We Let's could, do that. We yeah. could do yeah. some, stuff we could do some other work. things. Yeah. Yeah. Go places in sports cars. Yes. Lots Two of people. frequent flyer miles. <laughs> dual income. This yep. is, ooh, this is nice. I'm liking this. Yeah. yeah. I just, I'm more of an, I'm, you know, I'm an animal mom. <laughs> oh, yeah? How many animals? So between, I joke about this, but between Nelson and I, when we first met, I had two dogs and he had three cats. So oh, we were like shit. the Brady you Bunch that? of animals. <laughs> Did you merge that we successfully? Did. Massively successfully, actually. How do the animals get along? Um, so like, my golden retriever had actually just passed right before Nelson and I moved to get, moved in together. And then my golden doodle, who just passed in February, oh no. was the best. Like, she was a cuddle puddle all the time. And eventually, like, the cats got used to her, and they would just, like, curl up with her. And, no. Yeah. It's more about the cats. The dogs, like, I don't give a fuck. But, yeah. like, the cats, if, you know, when you if you have a cat that hasn't been around dogs before and you introduce more than one dog in a permit, it could be a real disaster. Oh, my God. Well, we have yeah. a new rescue dog. Her, she is a hundred percent purebred mutt. Um, she is like part. Oh gosh, I forget. She's like part husky and part like uh, chihuahua. Like she is Whoa. total, total mutt. She's so like a husky. whose eyes are gonna fall out of their face. <laughs> I don't even know. Like she came it, from what, Bakersfield. Is it more like a husky or more like a chihuahua? She's what size are we talking pounds. about? Oh, okay. So she's in between, Halfway and she's got between. like. Some um, American Staffordshire, she's got, uh, I forget what else. Like, there's a whole bunch. She's also got, like, some Australian cattle dog. Oh, weird. <laughs> like, so she's kind Can't of. Can't even picture this dog. She's kind of a lunatic. Um, she looks like a terrier, so she's, like, she kind of looks like oh. Benji-ish. Oh, okay. Um, but she's uh, she's kind of a terror. And with the cats now, she likes to chase the older cat or the younger cat, Gusto, the white one, um, around the house and like pretend to play with him and stuff. And he's kind of getting it. The little cat, Mags, she's eight pounds, so she's like, "Fuck you, no, go away. I'm gonna hide." Full grown eight pound cat. Yeah. Oh, tiny cat. She's almost. She's going on. She'll be nineteen next year. Oh wow. Yeah. So she has no interest in playing. Yeah. Our our senior cat has no interest in playing with our kitten. Well, I was gonna say you have a new kitten, right? Or two. (laughs) Not new anymore. Cricket is, we got her in mm, August and she was born in May of last year. So, uh, you know, she's, she's like eight months and she's probably, she's probably eight or nine pounds now. She's getting a little bigger, but then we, we have two brother and sister cats that are two and a half um, and then a 17 year old wow. um, senior cat. So we've got a nice blend going on. Yeah. Um, the senior cat will not leave her bedroom. She lives in one of the guest bedrooms, and she will not leave it. She's just like, this is where I am. This is my spot. So fortunately, the guest bedroom is where Hannah's office is. So Hannah Hannah spends a lot of time in there. And she doesn't freak out if the other cats come in. Yeah. But she ain't leaving. Yeah. Her food is in there. Her litter is in there. And that's that's her spot. So That's awesome. Yeah. So we have to make sure to spend plenty of time in the guest room. And every once in a while, like, Hannah's got to, like, sleep in there. Oh, because she's like, I'm lonely. Yeah. 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 The kid, the, that cat is, she's so sweet, but yeah. you know, we literally can't, like if we, if we pick her up and take her out of that room and put her down, she will sprint back into that room. It's really? a senior yeah, care yeah. center. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. You have to go visit. We should, <laughs> we should put like a, like a retirement community sign or something on that door. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, someone's stealing my treats. That's the cat's voice. And strangely, you know, if, but if you if you're in there and close the door, she'll also freak out. Oh, really? So she doesn't want to leave, but she doesn't want to be closed in. So it's wow. Like whole, yeah, Pico has needs. Aww. <laughs> yeah, but they're the best. I mean, I was never a cat person. 
I just didn't grow up with cats. I grew they're up with awesome, dogs. They're awesome, right? But they're really cool. Yeah, they're fun. And they have such a reputation as like, oh, cats, they're mean, they're nasty, they're like distant. But actually- You like, don't want to meet the person that owns a fucking cat like that. That's exactly it. Yeah. It's so much about who it is. Yeah. It's, if someone has shitty cats, they're probably shitty. Yep. Yep. <laughs> like you just don't- yep. Our cats are really fun. They have great personalities. They don't scratch people. They are like really playful and, and adorable and like- yeah, they they they're not mean. Yeah, yeah. But like with kids, like you can be like, this child is a nightmare, but their parents are great, or yeah. you know, vice versa. And yeah, yeah. Like, hey, yeah. just my brain is like, I don't know how to deal with this. Yeah. I don't know how to assess this whole situation. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Um, but yeah, I uh, you know, the cats and dogs have been getting along pretty well. We we definitely need to get the. Thule is her name, the the pup. Thule, like the bike rack? No, well, that's what everybody thinks, but actually, because she came from Bakersfield, she came from a high-kill shelter. Oh. Um, we named her after the Thule fog, so it's really thick. What's that? It's like, um, it's actually, so you know the tool material that's like sheer and like fluffy and hard to see through? It's usually used no. under like oh. skirts for oh, women. Oh, yeah, like the, the, fl- the fluffy stuff that goes under like a bridal Big, skirt. Yes, yeah, 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 okay. Exactly. Oh, that's called Thule? I it's, didn't know it's that. It's actually called Tool. Oh, how do you spell that? T-U-L-L-E. Oh, I've never heard that term before. Okay, learned um, a new word today. But in Bakersfield, you get this strange fog effect oh. um, as a result of a lot of the, the agricultural and... Oh yeah, that's it's not. I thought it was just that was just uh, dense uh, cow shit vaporized. <laughs> no, it's actually a cloud of Victorian it's dresses. Like, <laughs> yeah, just, just roll land. through. It's actually. The, oh yeah, that, that is that material I was yeah. thinking of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the Thule fog can be so thick that it shuts down I five. Mm-hmm. Like it's it can be really 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 bad, um, and so we named her oh, after the fog. Learned, learned a because, new word today, yeah. Thule. All so right. her 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 name is we call her Thule Rue. I'm sticking with the bike rack. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm a huge fan of the bike rack. Yeah, they make it's a quality item. I actually have a kayak rack from them. Oh. Yeah. Do you have a canoe rack though? No, I don't so have a canoe rack. I have a kayak and a kayak rack, which I'd really like to get rid of. <laughs> if anyone wants a kayak for sale, let me Facebook know. Facebook Marketplace, dude. Seriously? It's the only thing Facebook is good for. The oh my rest God. of it can fucking burn, it, but uh, Facebook Marketplace is good. You know, I've had a mixed mixed experience with Facebook Marketplace. But I've sold some things. My wife sells fucking all kinds of shit on Facebook Marketplace. We sell some really weird stuff that you never think people would buy. That's amazing. Yeah. Like, we we got one of those, uh, like a Culligan uh, water purifier thing that goes on, you know, it's attached to the sink and it's a separate little spout and bottled water comes out of it, basically, right? Reverse osmosis water. Yay, very exciting. So we didn't use Brita filters anymore. So we just sold a dozen Brita filters, not the pitcher, but the yeah, actual filters. charcoal filters, a dozen of those on Facebook Marketplace. Boom, done. I believe that it. kind of shit would just end up in the garbage. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I don't have these I don't anymore. Like, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, no. It turns out there's real money in this. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I mean, I wonder actually, given sort of the global shortage of all kinds of strange things, like I wonder if there's a Ooh. Brita filter shortage. Oh, mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, I have some C8 Corvettes in my fridge. So <laughs> Whoa! Sell all sports cars. Shows. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's really strange. Like, there's stuff that you're like, why is this so hard to find? Like, I, you know, I'm not a big grocery store fan. Like, I don't like going to the grocery store. It's a pain in the ass. I don't, I just don't like the experience of it. So I use Instacart, right? I know where you're going. Keep going. And a lot of times when I put, like, Oreos on the list, they send me back pictures of empty shelves. And I'm like, who stole all the Oreos? <laughs> like, There's a lot of stuff missing right now. Seriously? It's kind of like back to early pandemic status. So yeah. su- just supply just, chain just issues? Stuff like They're stacking chicken, up whatever. in those container ships off of Long Beach. Yeah. There's a ship like full of Oreos really somewhere. Really simple stuff. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, we, that, we don't, they don't have Greek yogurt. Sorry. Yep. It's like, huh. very strange. Yeah. And like you mentioned chicken. Like chicken prices are like through the roof. Oh, really? Because of there was a whole bunch of sort of issues around um, like health and stuff. Uh couple months ago and like the chicken producers have had major problems kind of rebuilding their flocks and stuff and of course you know I guess I'm with inflation I must be uh, insulated by my privilege I haven't (laughs) noticed the difference in chicken prices well I still buy chicken it's just like you know if you're going for like free range or like trying to get stuff that's like a little bit more you know, I got. I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to go grocery shopping later tonight. Like I'll have to pay attention. Ten bucks, nine ninety nine. Oh, bucks instead a of like, instead of like five or six, right? Oh, yeah, that is more. Yeah. If it, yeah, that I would notice. Yeah. All right, we'll have to pay attention. There's this. It's and it's weird stuff. Like Zach said, like weird stuff that you're like, why? Who? Like pasta. 
They're like, where did all the pasta go? <laughs> it's not like specialty groceries. No. It's like really no. normal stuff. And they're yeah. like, yeah, chicken prices soar. Yep. All right. Okay. I can tell you about pork bellies. I got all kinds of. What are we, I am in trading like, places. I'm like yeah, the queen I've never heard that term. of Orange useless juice. knowledge. Like right. I am really fun at cocktail parties because I can just, you know. I'm gonna make a list of things riff. for next next time. <laughs> okay. Can we talk about Rebel Rally? Yes, um, please. It seemed like it was really fucking hard. It was really fucking hard. Um, Alana gave us the what's uh, the what's over of it last time yeah. uh, she was here, and uh, we mentioned you on this, and you were driving a Cayenne. I am. I was. Um, that's a great photo right there. Thanks. That was actually taken by um, Caleb Wallace. Oh, um, I know. That. I know Caleb. Who is really kind of? I've never met him. I hadn't met him until the Rebel Rally, and he was there taking photos. And he has such good energy. Like he's just always positive. We're in the middle of a sandstorm. Everything's miserable. You're you haven't showered in four days. It's like, ugh, you're just so unhappy. And he's just like, hey, how's it going? Everything's good. And I'm like, God, you're just like a breath of fresh air. But the he's, sandstorm seemed brutal. That was terrifying. It was. We were at Big Dune, um, and we had spent the day kind of in and around that area. It's like right outside of Death Valley area, and we went through Titus Canyon, which is. Unreal. I think we drove through that. We did that? We, we sure drove did. through that. Yeah, it's, it's so a one. Cool. It's one way. One way in. It's one way, and you you can't stop and camp. Yeah, it's by like Lone Pine. Yeah. Um, we just drove through that earlier this year. It was awesome. It's incredible. Yeah, and it's it, a, it's definitely worth doing in any four wheel drive vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. Take a four wheel drive vehicle, <laughs> definitely, or an all wheel drive. My Porsche. Yeah, is you don't drive. need a you don't need like a crazy vehicle to no. do it, but like. But it's gravel roads, yeah. and some of it's a little rough, and some of it's a little bit. Um, it's so beautiful. If though. it rained, that game would change. Like, well, oh yeah. We, yeah. And this is the thing: as we were going up through through Titus Canyon, the storm started, so it was snowing at mm-hmm. the top. It was extremely windy. Like we had overnight, we had like sixty mile an hour gusts at the base, like at Big Dune, where mm-hmm. we were sleeping. What was your sleeping quarters? <laughs> we slept in the car. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Because of the sand? Because of the sand. You would normally, what, tent? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we had, um, my teammate Beth and I had two North Face tents that we really liked, except for the sand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like everything just comes yep. in. Yeah. Um, but we had gone through Titus Canyon that day, and we're coming back in the dark to Big Dune. Um, and... We knew something was going to be up, obviously, with this windstorm that was coming through, um, because Emily Miller, who's the who runs and has started the Rebel Rally, had given us a heads up that like this was going to happen, that we needed to watch kind of where we were, if we got into whiteout conditions, just pull over, you know, stay safe, hunker down, take your sleeping bags in case we have to stay overnight. Like it was not a joke, um, and when we got to camp. It looked like something from Hoth. I mean, like... <laughs> yeah, we saw a picture. It was fucked up. <laughs> it was great. Like, you know, you're out there, but you're full on goggles wrapped up because it's just, it's white out. Yeah. Like, you couldn't, you know, we didn't go to the bathroom without each other. Like, Beth and I were, like, holding hands. Oh, really? Because you, just, you couldn't, you know, you know if you can find lost. your way back. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, headlamps don't do anything. Like, you're wearing headlamps or whatever. They don't do anything because it's just reflecting back into your eyes. Um, so when we got back to camp, we, they had to have the fuel t- truck that we usually use like every night when you come back to base camp you wait in the fuel line and you get fueled up mm-hmm. well because of the conditions and how dry everything was they had to have the fuel truck leave because the static electricity could have basically just blown it up what oh what really even yeah. though it was like inside yep a truck? Because they they are only rated the the guy who was running the fuel line was like or the fuel truck was like yeah we're you know we had to pull it because we were only rated ten miles an hour of wind and the sand oh, and wow. everything they were like we had to get it out of there. Well, that's something you don't really think about, huh? So did you have enough fuel to do two days of uh, whatever? So competition. The Cayenne is unreal in terms of like its was its it fuel diesel? economy. No, it was it gas? Gas. I it, never it was a went. Six. Yeah. Okay. It's a two. It was a two thousand. Uh, 20, sorry, twenty twenty Cayenne S. Okay. Um, and it had the air suspension and everything in it, which was fantastic. But I never went below about half a tank, and we drove, you know, probably one hundred and fifty miles off road. Now it's slow. Yeah. In a day, like yeah, you're not using a lot of revs. You're not using a ton of throttle. Yeah. You know? So it was. It was really great actually but that night we got to camp and they were like here's a cookie you guys are sleeping in your car tonight and i was like oh yeah. <laughs> it's like oh no can, can you explain to me uh is it do you have like a base camp and then every day you're doing 
these like fingers or branches out and backs or does it move just can't move each day or every couple of days so can't moves every couple of days okay. so you start um we started uh near eli or eli nevada mm-hmm. yeah and ely, ely. Mm-hmm. i don't know how e-l-y to... yeah ely exactly yeah um on this gorgeous gorgeous ranch huge that was both blm land and ranch it's been a long time owned by this one woman's family for hundreds of years they raised like a heritage breed of cow Mm. um beautiful gorgeous but incredibly desolate and just dirt roads crisscrossing everywhere um so we stayed at the ranch there and it was really awesome we had two nights there and then we moved camps to big dune and we were gonna we had two nights there and then we had two nights so the the fun part about the sandstorm big dune right at the end of titus canyon it's actually just a little bit outside, so it's. Uh, I can't Zach's remember. Zach's got a map. A map will help. Big Dune Recreation Area. Pull up the Google Maps there on the right. Let's see what, where it is relative to There's things a town that I nearby. recognize. Oh, that's by. That's definitely by like Lone Pine and Big Pine, isn't it? I think so. I don't. I. This is the other thing about the Rebel Rally is you're using Ash, paper Meadows, maps, Emma. so you literally somebody's like, "Well, where were you?" And you're like, "I have no idea." Mm-hmm. In the lo- context. Oh Lone no! Pines. So that's Death Valley. Go yeah. back. See, there's see stovepipe so wells. Creek, that's Death yeah. Valley. Yep. Oh, okay. It's so on it's the east other side. of Death Valley, right? Okay, I see. I see. I see. Yeah, Got it. And Lone Pine's here to the west. Yeah. Okay. Oh wait, did you go through Titus Canyon up the hill? Up the hill. Normally, it's one way down, down. the hill. Yeah. Oh, so they closed it for you guys. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how they coordinated it, but it was oh. pretty awesome. Oh, going uh, okay, because that's why I was disoriented because I we were only allowed to go down the hill, but if you went up the hill, yeah, that we, rules. We came from the Amargosa Valley oh, into cool. Death Valley and then came back over. Oh. Uh. Um, yeah, maybe they found got a special permit or something for you guys to do it. Cool. Yeah, and there were you know there were. 52 vehicles. There were 104 competitors, which was pretty rad, um, which is the biggest group they've had. This is the sixth year of the rally. Um, so it was kind of cool. Like we all, you know, some people chose to sleep in their tents the night of the massive sandstorm. Um, it did some pretty significant damage to the main tent, which is where like our base camp. Um, essentially every morning, Emily comes out, she rings her cowbell, wakes you up. And you go at 5 a.m. into the tent, get your checkpoint list, and then you sit down and and your navigator, so Beth was my navigator, um, plots all those points. And you have, you know, it's usually like two hours before your start time, and then you have to line up for start, and then you go. And it's not a race for time, it's a race for points. Yeah, you have Um, to hit all the checkpoints. Yeah, and it's, it's a really precise, accurate navigation is what gets you the points. So for us, it was a little bit of a trick because we had, so we had two rally computers, um, which here's here's a money-making idea. I'm just giving it out there for free. If you have a TerraTrip or an ICO rally computer, please post a video of someone showing people how to use it. <laughs> like just showing people how to calibrate the thing because yeah. the poor Beth had to like go through this manual and figure out like what it looked like something from um, like a, uh, SOS, like it was like two dots, one dot, one long dot. That who knows what buttons am I supposed to push? I don't know. But so we had <sighs> some yeah, problems. Yeah, instructional video could be helpful. Seriously, and there are none out there. We really? looked. It's crazy. Like oh, that's interesting. Just look at there. It's. I think it's essentially because it's a very niche. Maybe there's a market product. for you to do this, by the way, because now presumably <laughs> I you know. still haven't figured it out. Oh, that's shit. the problem. <laughs> like Beth figured it out, thank God. And she's like, it was like it was sort of like a, some kind of rain dance that would happen on that side of the car. It was okay. like, okay, I'm pushing these buttons and these, the, the ICO is resetting, but our TerraTrip never turned on. It never worked. Um, which what, are is, those, what are they supposed to do, those so two they're, devices? They're spare odometers, oh, essentially. Okay. And they can be precisely calibrated um, based on the, the diameter of your wheel. Oh, like so if you're running a different size wheel from stock, you need to Or have... when you air down. Oh, the circumference yeah. changes, right? Right. So oh, your wow. distance changes. Wow. And the only thing that, that in the Rebel Rally, the only thing that never lies is heading and distance. Well, if you can't tell how far you've gone, yeah. you're a little bit lost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And how precise do you need to be for these checkpoints? So within hundredths, basically. Depending hundredths of a of mile, a kilometer. kilometer? Okay. Yeah, so meters. Yeah. Within, you oh, know, so well, 50 over the meters co- to... Yeah. You know, 100 meters to well, 30, some be, are 30 meters. That can make a difference. It can make For a sure, difference. yeah. If you change the diameter of your tires, that makes a difference. Would, yeah. would different groups pick different points to go? Like, would, would you guys have a different order 
uh, compared to another group because you're like, oh, we should go this way first because that'll save more time. Because it's not for time, but you want to make sure you can get all the points in daylight, right? You yeah. And they're not time. in order. It's, it's here's a list of 20 points and you got to figure out your journey your to get to those. Yeah. And you're looking at a map that's 100,000 map. So, or even worse, Emily, I love you, but you give us 200,000 maps and they were like the hardest things to read because you're looking at stuff that's like the width of a hair and you're yeah. like, is that a dirt road? Yeah, yeah. Is that a four by four road? Is that a power line road? Yeah. Is that a wash? Even on regular fucking maps. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, we, we just did the backcountry discovery route and, you know, if a kilometer is an inch, you know, you sometimes turns don't even make it onto the fucking map. You know, the road curves and you're like, it. this is a not straight there. line. It's not even there. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the funny thing is the thing, you know, that, like I said, Emily said is the maps lie, right? So they may be an older map. Those roads may have changed. Lines may have changed because of property rights or the way things have kind of shaken out. And they just haven't had the opportunity to update those maps. So you're, you know, if you're heading and your distance is, if either one of those things are a little bit wishy-washy, you're like, mm, are, are all the checkpoints else? like, I mean, obviously they're places you can get to by car, but mm -hmm. are they necessarily, like, how do you know you're not like driving over some endangered shrub or driving in like someone's private property? Like if you're, <laughs> if you, if it's not one, two, three, four, five, yeah. if it's, it's here's a, an array of points and you pick how to get there, like, how do you know you're not driving places you shouldn't be driving? Right, like accidentally trespassing in Oregon and getting a misdemeanor. Then, exactly. Oh, dear. <laughs> Wait, I feel like there's a story there here. There is, but you yeah. tell your story. But that's, <laughs> you're here. but that's pretty much the whole story. He yeah. trespassed accidentally in Oregon Ooh, and got a misdemeanor. I'm sorry. That's okay. Mm. That's rough. It, wor it worked out okay. Good. Yeah. Sorry, Jeff. Anyway, continue. <laughs> um, yeah, the way that it works is like it, they, a lot of the places we go are OHV areas, mm -hmm. so a lot of it is you know, either BLM land or, you know, maintained by BLM. So that's very clear in a lot of ways. You don't go off the trail. Okay. Unless you're in an OHV area that's like clearly delineated that yes, you can go off the right. trail. And well, that prob does that help or does that make it harder? <laughs> Going off the trail is a lot harder. Oh yeah. I mean, I had never done, so I've never off-roaded in my life. Ever? Ever. Oh. Like ever. Oh, oh this well, this is, okay. is like, this is a way to start. Wow. Ever. <laughs> really? Well, that's a. I mean, I've done, you know, press launches. Yeah. They're yeah. like, drive up that path and you're like, got it. Yeah. Keep There's it like five path. spotters here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Keep going. You know, like I can do that. Um, I mean, but first I, time swimming. Welcome to the ocean. Yeah. I mean, that's, here you go. that's really nice. Yeah. No, to go from never off roading to like free range map navigation is a pretty big <laughs> fucking leap, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It was probably like, it was one of the most challenging things I've done. And the thing that I am the most proud of myself about is that two things. You didn't die. I didn't, well, I didn't die and I didn't kill my, my navigator, mm -hmm. which was great. We totally got along and don't hate each other at the end of it, which is another thing, but I didn't pop any tires. That's a good one. I was riding on ATs on twenties. You what? You went with 20s? I, uh, yeah. It's just what you, had. It just it what you what had? Yeah. <laughs> just wow. what you had? Well, so the Cayenne S comes with staggered tires, 19s uh -huh. and 20s. And so, so would you run four four rears? You're required to carry two spares with for the rally. Uh -huh. Well, that would have meant we had to carry four. Yeah. So we opted to get spacers and do 20s all around. Why instead of 19s all around? Because of the global shortage of tires and Get the and fuck stuff. out of we here, really? Get 19s. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah. That's Very. not... That's not as bad as uh, it's not as bad as I would have seen, and they are they are a legit tire. Yeah, they're a legit tire, and yeah. they were they performed. I mean, I ran them down at ten psi on the dunes. Whoa! People would 10 come PSI up ten psi on twenty inch wheels. Wow! <laughs> didn't break a bead. That's didn't nice. blow a tire. I'm impressed. It was I'm good. Impressed. That's it good. Was, yeah. And so I'm like, I that's I, good. I, I yeah. killed that. I got it. Yeah. Um, the other thing I'm really proud of is the fact that we finished. I mean, we came in seventh in the, in the X cross. We weren't, you know, podium, but that's there were only ten, I think, or eleven um, X cross uh, competitors because the four by four group, like the Jeeps and everybody that has locking differentials and everything, is a whole different group, and they have more more difficult checkpoints. Right. Mm, okay. Um, so like they have more rock crawly stuff or you know stuff that that crossovers can't do, um, and I mean. The fact that we we finished, we didn't, and we didn't break anything. There was, I never 
We didn't do one ounce of maintenance to that car. Oh, that's nice. The entire time. And we were massive sandstorms. Like, I'm sure that air filter needs to be replaced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and the brakes need to be blown out. I might have and... tapped out the air filter after the sandstorm. That might have been well, something I would we had do. really wanted to, except for the fact that the next night after the sandstorm, we went to the self-camp night. So we didn't have mechanics, and we didn't have, like, a air compressor that, uh. you know, could reverse <laughs> reverse the air, basically, um, to blow it out. Um, we actually talked to a couple of competitors who we could borrow. You know, they have onboard air, because a lot of people are privateers, and they do this themselves. And it's really expensive. Like, just the gear you need and the entry fee and everything else is very pricey. Um, but the, the thing about the Rebel is, like, you basically, you can't rely on the organizers. Like, they tell you, they're like, we're rocks. Like, you can ask us questions, but we're not going to tell you anything. You're going to have to figure it out. Huh. It's like it's like you said, like, here's the ocean. Learn to swim. Wow. Mm-hmm. Which is pretty cool. It's very cool. It's actually. Cool, like, the thing I really liked about it was the fact that it, it really doesn't coddle you. It's like, I mean, you have incredible dinners, and they have, like, this Michelin star chef who cooks for you for breakfast and, and dinner. Lunches, like snacks and stuff that you, mostly I survived on gummy bears. There was one <laughs> point where, where my, my navigator looked at me and she was like, you are surrounded by <laughs> snacks. <laughs> I was like, uh-huh, and I'm happy. We will be fine. <laughs> this is fine. Yeah. I'll just get us through this. I'd be like, I'd be keep, I'd be eating straight jars of peanut butter. Yeah. That's my, that's my go-to. Yeah. Ritz crackers and peanut butter. I, I could went live through, on that for a little while. <laughs> Beth, Beth was really funny because she's, she's an avid outdoors woman. She's, do you guys know, well, you know Zach Bowman? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Zach Bowman's wife. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. I know Zach Bowman as being an absolute glutton for punishment for <laughs> stories. He just tortures himself to mm-hmm. get car stories. It's yeah. it's uh, intense. He's he's an incredible writer, and he's now running UTV magazine, um, UTV Driver. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, but Beth and he did that year long trip on the road. Yeah, and like um, a fucking camper top pickup, wasn't yep, it? Yep. And they did a lot of this like BLM road camping stuff that's yeah, off like the grid. Tree branches fell on the thing. Yep. I mean, yeah. yeah. Broke the roof and like all kinds of stuff. And they stayed with us in Austin when they were coming back through because they needed to repair the Dodge at the time. Um, and Beth and I became friends that way. But she's done this stuff, you know, quite significant for a year with her one year old, two year old, yeah. I think. Um, and so she's really accomplished and really like I was like, if there's one person I'm going into the woods with, it's going to be you because yeah. you just have your stuff together. Because yeah. anything you could complain about, she's like, you know what would make this harder? A one-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Try feeding nothing. someone. Yeah. yeah. Well, nothing. and it was really funny because I had, you to your point about Ritz crackers, I had a box of Triscuits and Beth was like, Abby, those should be in a bag. And I was like, oh, you're right. Because space. And I was because, like, oh. Yes. Space and sand. Yeah. And sand. Yeah. But I just ended up eating two bo- <laughs> I ate Triscuits and gummy bears. <laughs> That's what I ate. You know, road food. Yeah. I understand. Speaking of random UTV sidebar, you know what someone sent me this morning on Instagram? Someone took a UTV and put two jet skis underneath it. Why? What? Two jet skis. So like, UTV, oh, I saw that video. That's how that was doing that? jet skis. Holy. Uh, I, th- I can't remember if it was on Trophy Burrow or Florida Man or one of my favorite Instagram Florida followers. Man. Possibly even Qualified Captain. That's which, where it was. By the way, the, you, do you follow the Qualified Captain no. on Instagram? You must. Okay. It's the best. It's people fucking up on boats. That's oh, all it is. perfect. And it's, it is the best Instagram ever. And my, my friend Brad is at the Florida, uh, Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show right now. Yeah. And the Qualified Captain has a booth. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, wow. it's really. Boring. This oh is God. look at this fucking crazy thing. This is a UTV with jet skis instead of wheels, and the suspension works. This is. I believe you, it. You can see. Look, you yeah, can see you them can suspending. See Holy that is, shit! That is functional. Wow. It's got, and I saw the inside on this guy's. Uh, the, if you look in the comments, the guys, uh, the manufacturer of it is there, and it's oh got a, it's got a butterfly style steering wheel. Yeah. And on each side is one of the jet ski throttles. Oh wow! And the and the steering is linked Ooh. by the wheel. The two jet skis have a link thing, and he's got a throttle on each fucking thing. Go in. Look. Can you look in the comments? And I don't know why that doesn't expand. That. Yeah. It's but uh, uh, yeah, this guy should run the space program. Yes, that's yeah. amazing. There you go. It is. It is fucking gnarly. Space it's, Force. It's, it's exactly Force. for radio <laughs> yeah. people. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a UTV <laughs> body with suspension, and instead of wheels, it has a jet ski under each side. 
and it works. I mean, it looks a little bit to- uh, tip heavy, top heavy, but yeah. that's pretty rad. Seems very it's shady so for sure. It's very shady, Man, but it's like like, like those swamp boats down in, yeah. in Florida. You're like, this, this is not dangerous. supposed to work this way. Yeah, I agree with that too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, mean, I don't know what happened if you try to take a turn hard in this thing. Yeah, but right. it, but it does seem to work. That's incredible. Yeah, it's a boat with suspension. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, if you think great. about it, like seeing like we were out in Glamis and there was a big event that was coming up the next like that Saturday and some of the teams were out practicing some of the stuff that they do with those things is incredible but also freaking terrifying yeah yeah it's rad well then you think about the fact that they do it all drunk yeah I mean Glamis is the land of drunk dune buggy well and that was one of the big things it's the water of land of land it is (laughs) the water it's the ocean you know what is it the 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 desert is an ocean with the it's life underground oh very good very good (laughs) me and my quoting of song lyrics for someone who's been through the desert on a horse with no name it literally actually she had a name her name was ruby oh we named the car of course you did of course we of did of course you did i told you i get i have relationships with my vehicles was even that porsche's if, car whose yeah, car was it it's porsche's car oh, okay yeah it was um actually came from porsche atlanta um the pec in atlanta and they shipped it so over leftover school car <laughs> kind probably, of probably was yeah i mean when we first took it out um did you ask them or did they ask invite they you? They asked me. They invited you? Yeah, That's nice. Which was really, really cool. I've mm-hmm. been really lucky in that. Um, I had covered the Rebel the year before and I was like, I kind of want to do this. And I started talking to various friends in the business and I was like, hey, I'm just kind of putting it out there. And the next thing I knew, Porsche called up and was like, hi, hey, would you like to? And I was so like, cool. oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was well worth it, and they were huge supporters. I mean, the project was really kind of small in there. Like, they were kind of... Like, we're trying this out. We don't know what it's going to be like. And there were lots of things that we've learned from the experience that we had um, in terms of, like, what you need and what you don't need and, you know, how to do it right and all this stuff. What did you bring that you didn't need? Um, we brought too many snacks. <laughs> Way too many snacks. Not a joke. You're like, I literally need one afternoon of snacks, <laughs> and that true. is all. <laughs> like, way too many snacks. We also, um, one of the things I probably, like, when we first went out for training, um, they had given us a big floor jack, which would have been really helpful if we had popped a tire. And a few of the the crossover teams had the same floor jack, um, which actually they used quite a bit. Um, the Kia teams, I think, changed four tires what? Wow. over the entire race, and they had two teams. What are they doing wrong? Well, going fast. There's maybe. a reason. Yeah, there's a reason that they were second and third in, right. in the crossover oh, class. It's I, they I were only going said fast. that because you said you're new and I would I was going to be surprised if you were just going flat out all the time. You are probably being a little bit more careful. I was. So maybe that's why they popped all their t- yeah. tires. for sure. But, um, you know, like the, the two teams, there's Alyssa and Sabrina and Tana and Verena. Um, Verena is a actual like rally driver. Mm-hmm. Like she's pro or she has been pro. Really super talented. Um, Tana is an incredibly talented navigator. She's done the Rebel a few times. And when I say incredibly talented navigator, what I mean is like someone that can look at a map and pinpoint exactly where that is and then go out in the world and be like, that's that mountain, mm-hmm. that's that one. Okay, we're triangulating, we're here. And I need to go 30 That's 30 a special that talent. It's I mean, amazing. You can learn it, but it also requires this sort of innate kind of visualization ability. It's I've seen people do the same thing with boats. Yeah. You know, and yep. it's 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 very challenging. It's incredibly mm. challenging. And then Alyssa and Sabrina, both of them have done the gazelles, which is an incredible race in Morocco. Um, and have both, you know, been very close with Chrissy Beavis, who's the, she's a very talented navigator. She's she was a co-driver with pa- Travis Pastrana. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I think she's done Tanner Faust as well. Uh, but like there's, you can look up her YouTube videos. Cool as a cucumber. Yeah. Freaking phenomenal. No, rally co-drivers are like, they're, they're a different breed of human. Unreal. Yeah. So like they had a lot oh, of I can, experience. I can read <laughs> while you're <laughs> going sideways at a hundred on a dirt road. Yeah. <laughs> my, my motion sickness would be like, let me off right oh now. God. Like, yeah. how much do you want to sit and puke? I just let me off. Yeah. <laughs> Good. That's why I drove. Because and just there was like, no, way. no, you know, how do you do that without fear? Oh. <sighs> I mean, even even with the best driver in the world, like how do you do that without without fear? No, you know? I mean, and that's the thing is like you're just the passenger, like you don't have any control over yeah. it, and it's terrifying. I mean, Verena actually rolled her her car 
um, which was what actually took her out of like the, in the when rebel she was, rally. No, no, no. And when she was professional, oh. when she was doing rally, um, she rolled it, and that was sort of the end of her. She was like, ah, I'm kind of done with this. Um, but now she does like online. Uh, she Twitch streams her um, online races. Oh my gosh, what yeah. are they called? Sim racing. Sim racing. Sim racing. Sim racing. Yeah. There we go. Um, and then Alyssa and Sabrina were they changed three tires, <laughs> and Tana and Verena only changed one. Um, but Tana and Verena were amazing because they changed one in 13 minutes. Because the other part of this is that those checkpoints that you've plotted, if you mm-hmm. have like 25 checkpoints on your list, you don't have to hit all of them. You can choose and pick and choose. You have to hit all the green ones. And the green ones have specific, they all have specific times of open and close. Mm. So like- Oh, so you have to get to this one by 2 p.m. or whatever? Well, it's based on what time you start. So if you start oh. at 7.13, you're- Green check mark opens at or checkpoint opens at you know nine thirteen, but then closes at like eleven forty two. Oh, because it's done on hours, mm-hmm. and so you have to pick the best path for you, your co driver. There's and a lot of math in this one. It is. It's yeah. a ton, and then you know you have to you have to have a strategy. It's like okay, well, green check marks you can see. Uh, they have a flag, big flag, and usually are manned. So they have a, a rally worker there. You can, you know, be like, is there any messages I need to know? And they'll be like, yes or no. But beyond that, they're like, bye, I'm a rock. Mm-hmm. I'm not telling you anything. Um, and then you have blue checkpoints, which are little tiny poles that can be hidden behind bushes or sometimes they're flags. Um, and the four by fours and the X crosses often have different ones even if they're on the same path. So you have to know that you're, that's your blue, not the, the four by fours. Mm. Um, and you do that through triangulation. You're like, okay, that's that mountain, that's that you know radio tower. Do they ever have them it's like 50 feet apart? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Well, so it's not, it's, they're usually within like, I think it was a half a kilometer they wouldn't oh, be okay. within. But like if you are outside of the, if you signal at the wrong one, you'll get a wide miss penalty, mm-hmm. which then takes your points down. And then the black checkpoints are not marked at all. So you're just like, Meh, this feels like, we used to call it yeah. push and pray. It was like, I'd be like, this feels like a black check mark. Let's just, yeah, we're going click, right. to click the box and be like, okay, we're good. But then what happens is you have a GPS box that um, then gives you the coordinates of where you are. And you can plot that on the map and figure out mm-hmm. where you are and what your distance is and whatever. But you can't, you can't use GPS... Uh, to like make a route to the next thing, right? It just no. yeah. can, it just tells you where you are. Yep. And you yeah. have to figure out how to get over there. Yep. Okay. And like you have to look at your maps and go, okay, well, this looks like a path I can take in my vehicle. And that was the biggest thing. It was like, can I can I do this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I have like eight and a half inches of clearance, and that's with the air suspension totally lifted. And I'm running on 20s, and I'm running them aired down. So how ru- how risky do I want to be? And you right, never wow. ever know. And every morning, I, the running sort of joke in my head is like Emily would be like, "Okay, this is really tricky driving. You got to be really careful. There's lots of obstacles. Don't blow your tires. Don't da da da." And I would be like anxious and terrified in the morning. And then by the end of it, I'd like cross the finish line. I'd be like, "Ha." Huh. Yeah. Well, that wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure they uh, there's a, a value in pre-scaring you. Yeah. You know, for sure. Yeah. Um, and also maybe some of the 4 by 4 trails were particularly gnarly. You they know? were. I mean, yeah. some of the stuff that, like, if you guys ever get a chance to bring Emmy in and have her talk about her experience, too, like some of the stuff that they went through because they're in the 4 by 4 group, even though... And she was in a Rivian, right? Yeah. The yeah. Rivian actually technically is all-wheel drive. It's not... It, it's a little bit on the sort of fence, but it's intended to be more four by four. Um, some of the stuff that they had to go through was really, really tough. And the electric, the layer of the, the additional layer of electric powered vehicle yeah. is a whole other calculation. You're, Do they bring out generators to charge them? So it's really fascinating. They have a, um, a company um, whose name I'm totally blanking on right now, uh, Power Innovations, I think. And they essentially have developed a system that you can use for remote charging from a semi truck. Right. So as long as the semi can get to a location, so like at Big Dune we had it was able to drive out, same with the fuel truck, right? Um and they could power for overnight or however long they needed. How many to power. EVs were there? So the two Kias were plug in hybrids, the Rivian was E V and then the ID four oh, yeah, the ran ID4. it. Which yeah. was amazing. Mercedes Lilenthal ran that. She was the driver. And Emily, her her navigator, phenomenal. Because that whole thing is like, I only have X amount of range. 
and it's cold today, or it's hot today, mm-hmm. or the uh, wind's yeah. blowing. And when the wind blows, yeah. your power changes. Mm-hmm. And you know, the fact that like they had to be so precise with all of their checkpoints because they were like, can't backtrack. Right? Yeah, you make a mistake. Yeah, you're stranded out there. What are you doing? Yeah, like you're in deep trouble. Yeah. So, Whoa. um, it was that was incredibly impressive, and it's like that this, seems like it would be stressful. Oh my god. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> seems, it, it would be. That seems stressful. You, and you would not like it. <laughs> you, no, you really would like it. I would it. have a panic attack probably. It was really stressful. I mean, there were moments where you know you're look like me in the driver's seat looking at something, and I just would look at Beth and I'd be like, "We're going over that," and she's like, "Okay, if you think you can do it," and I was like. Yep, we can do it. And you get to the other side and you're like, I really didn't think I could do that. That's oh, yeah, cool. I've done that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. How did I do that? Yeah, too late to turn back now. Yeah, well, foot down. Committed. <laughs> yeah. Yep, here we go. Uh-huh. Um, but the thing that I walk away from the rebel with uh, on a like personal level is the idea that a lot of the fears and like sort of limits we put on ourselves, right? Whether it's I have ambitions to get my stories in like increasingly more well-known publications, right? Like for this, I'm pitching everybody from Self Magazine to the LA Times to the New York Times to be like, hey, this is a really interesting, unique thing. But those limitations that I put on myself, those fears that I have are all in my head, Mm -hmm. right? About whether or not I'm going to be able to do something. Or someone has told me, it's scary, don't do that. And then all of a sudden you're like, uh... I just did that. Yeah. I'm I'm okay at that. Like it's like opened up this idea of possibility and as like, you know, at 42 you're like, I think I got my shit together. Mm-hmm. But then you're like, no, actually, there's a whole lot more I can learn. Yeah. yeah. It feels good to push yourself too. Yeah. It's really rewarding. I mean, this my my lizard brain of driving is like, oh, this is too complicated. I'd rather just do a stage rally where you can go real fast and slide around. It's much simpler. Yeah. But then I also totally recognize there's a part of our brain or my brain that would like you enjoy the navigation the challenge of that the mental thing and then you get to the end of it and you're like oh we did that yeah, I mean, yeah. it's much there's much more um a lot more systems you have to operate correctly yeah to, like, complete it cool. plus yeah. you do have the you know the one sos yep don't let me die out here button so you you know you know you're you're not you know you're not in mortal danger, no. you know. I mean, it's no. like you, you know, we're saying, oh, okay, we're we're disqualified. We're not going to die out here. Yeah, you exactly. know what I mean? If it's uh, so, that probably not to not to, at all to discount what you're saying, but no. but that's the difference between doing throwing yourself into that type of off roading as part of a group challenge with some type of support system yeah. versus solo. I'm going to drive out to these places and no one knows where I am and there's no service and there's no satellite connection and there's nothing, you know, that could be really, really intimidating. Yeah. yeah. They take a lot of, cons- of safety considerations into account. Um, we all have satellite phones um, that we can use. We all have, um, you know, we're tracked. They, You can track us on a live tracker when mm-hmm. we're, we're on the event. Our phones are actually with us, but they're locked in a lockbox in the back of the car. So if we needed to, we could try our cell phones. Um, and, you know, this year they had a few people that had damaged their vehicles. We had one Jeep that broke an axle. We had um, a couple other people that blew suspension, all kinds of stuff. Um, and they have a team that comes out and will, you know, put you flatbed you and get you back to camp and all this stuff. Um, they have the thing about the rebel is like everybody finishes, meaning like even if you break your car, they will get you across the line, mm-hmm. um, which is a, a huge thing. Um, and I mean, Beth, God bless her, she struggled with um, altitude sickness. She gets altitude sickness. No, yeah. we were only at like five thousand feet in Eli or altitude Ellie. Altitude sickness at five thousand feet. Yeah. That's very sensitive. Yeah, she's really sensitive, and um, so for like two days, she was real sick. Well, like, I've never heard of someone being sick at 5,000 feet before. That's yeah. not very high. No, it wasn't very high. Yeah. But she she had, you know, all the symptoms, migraines, oh, like everything, like just, and they, it was really great because the Rebel, the medic team took, like when we would stop at a green checkpoint, um, I, we would kind of sit and assess, like the whole thing about they it like was- oxygen tanks for her? Yeah. Really? I mean, they would have offered it if, if she needed it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we would sit and plot our next point or plot our path because based on how she was feeling. So like, because my rule was either one of us says we're done, Mm -hmm. we're going, cool, we're done, we're going home. I'm okay with that. Like, 
you know, we're not out here to die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is not worth being, we can be uncomfortable and we can handle it, but like medical stuff, stuff that's, that's scary, add on the fact that you're in the middle of nowhere, that's a whole other level. Mm-hmm. So whenever we'd stop at a green checkpoint, the workers kind of knew who we were in our bright orange Porsche, and they would come up and they'd be like, hi, how you doing? Mm-hmm. You doing okay? Here, have some electrolytes. Here, mm-hmm. have some, you know, you need some Advil? You good? Yeah, like, yeah. whatever the case may be. They took That's nice. really good care of us. That's good. Um, so to your point, like, you're not out there totally by yourself. So if you're going to do it, like, if you're going to go all in on, like, trying this thing for the first time, it's a fantastic place to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, because even though it is challenging and even though you will change your own tire and you will fix your own shit if you break it, because they are pretty clear about that, like, know your vehicle, know yeah, how it yeah. works, know how to fix it, um, know how to camp <laughs> is the other thing, and keep yourself comfortable right. in that. Do people bring rooftop tents? Some of them did. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't see one on, on your vehicle. No. We actually, strangely enough, we couldn't find a roof rack that fit the 2020 Cayenne S. You know, Cayennes have unique roof rails. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Porsche couldn't find one. They actually ended up reaching out to um, a couple of different roof rack companies to really? see if they could like retrofit something. Joey Seeley probably has at Emotion Engineering. Oh, yeah. He probably has something, although I don't know if he, I'm sure he doesn't stock any of that shit. So his, I guess, girlfriend, partner, she was actually in the other Porsche Cayenne. Oh, there really? There were three of us. Was it the white one? The white one. white one? She was That's in the white the one. one. I drove that car. Oh, yeah? It's awesome. It is awesome. Yeah, I did a film for my Haggerty show with that oh, car. Cool. It drives great yeah. off-road. It, it doesn't have a lift. Like, it's pretty much, it has different tires, but yeah, there's no yeah. lift on it. Um, but both the other Cayennes had skid plates, mm-hmm. everything else. We were literally bone stock. Joey's, did you get to look underneath that Cayenne? No. Joey's skid plate design on that thing is amazing. Is it's it? It's full coverage. Wow. Every, everything that could get damaged is protected under there. It's really, really cool. That's awesome. He's very smart. Yeah. Yeah, very well, talented. And, you know, they came highly recommended to us for like installing the trip computers and stuff. Yeah. Um, but we just got down to the wire and and ended up like the like I said, the Terra trip never worked. The Ico kind of worked, but every time trying to recalibrate it, you had to be in a straight line on like flat road and <laughs> there mm-hmm. isn't any. <laughs> Good luck. Find that in the <laughs> desert. Mm-hmm. That's funny. So someone make an instructional video. Yeah. That seems like it's that would be worthwhile. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you can make money at this. Yeah. I will watch it. That I will seems consume so that. silly that no one's made an instructional video for that. Well, it's the the ICO or ICO. I don't know how to say it. It's usually used for motorcycle. Mm-hmm. Um, off-roading basically Mm -hmm. and we use like road books so like the stuff that we use on um yeah i see this thing that's it just this little fucking thing it's 425 dollars yep huh and then a terra trip is just as expensive but click on support zach let's see if there's a video (laughs) right here on the website that someone has missed repairs reconditioning technical question uh Product manuals, but no videos. Wait, huh? open the product manual. <laughs> okay. You'll see what we're really. The Rally at. Max Two or the Rally Max G. I think it's the two. The Rally because Max the Two. Because the G, I think, has GPS. Let's see what this thing is. This thing looks oh, like no, a has... digital clock. This that you thing would look so it has at those two buttons. It's two buttons on the side. And it's then a little you have a black separate button system with an LCD screen. Scroll down. Let's see how do we how do we uh, use this. That's thing. what you're looking at. You're like thumb switch. Okay. With no markings on the switch, right? No markings. Okay. So this is Perfect. three black circles on a square. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Measuring wheel yeah, circumference. Measure your wheel. Automatic calibration. If you can figure that out, that's fun. But like, what is that? What do those two long buttons mean? Yeah. Those are now. That, now they have. That, some, they have an oval graphic. That is a really bad. That graphic to just power this fucking thing on and off is really. If terrible. you hadn't said long hold <laughs> earlier, I wouldn't know what that was. Yeah. Like that. The only reason I I, I think that's what that does means. Does that mean but, long yeah. hold? It does. We finally figured that out. It does mean long hold. <laughs> that's but terrible. Here's the thing. When you so there's especially no, there's no key, no legend in this fucking thing. No. <sighs> like on TSDs, like time what? time speed distance, you have to reset the rally computer at every turn, right? At every tulip node. Yeah. Well. Sometimes if you accidentally hold down the button too long, it turns off. Oh, shit. And then you're like, well, guess we're using the odometer on the car. This is terrible. <laughs> this is not This well is not designed. a good manual. All right. I, I just, I, I can just, just tell. Like, what this, do those little stars mean? I, I don't, don't even know, know what, what the stars mean. Short press? I, I don't or, know. Or, Click? N- or don't, pre- don't, don't press? Don't press. No, don't press. And, but, the, but we're looking at two circles aligned vertically, but the controller 
has, has three. Has three. And there's two on the unit. So you're like, I guess it's the button on the unit, not the controller. Oh my God, it's so, so what, frustrating. What's the controller for? <laughs> Yeah. Well, the controller essentially is for like, so you, the person sitting in the passenger seat doesn't have to reach forward and push the buttons is what we figured out. Oh, so out. you hold it. So you can, it's like got a little ring on it. You can just push it. Oh, okay. okay. We're on like page 12. This is the first time I've seen three buttons next Selecting to Selecting precision. Holy shit. This is not how a did, good. We, we spent hours, poor Beth spent hours trying to figure out how to move the decimal point. <laughs> we actually ended up resorting to putting a sticky flag on it just because we were like, this is where the decimal point oh is. Oh my God. Just sharpie it in. Yeah. yeah. Someone needs to. This 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 seems like a technology that could really be updated at this point. It's right? begging. It's begging for a YouTube video. Adjust like, the YouTube here's how video. I, you, how to do it? Yeah. That's my that's my goofy dog. Yeah. That, oh yeah, yeah. Looking. She's very cute. Oh, that's very. Oh hi. <laughs> She's very oh, that's sweet. That's a very cute pup. Yeah. No. Someone needs to make a YouTube video for that. That that instruction manual would drive me insane. Poor Beth. I was like, you are a goddess. That's for this. crazy. It was amazing. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we ended up relying a lot on the um, Cars Odo, which wasn't calibrated because you're airing up and airing down. Yeah, so yeah. you're like, mm, I think we're kind of there. But it probably wasn't as bad because you were running yeah. the 20-inch wheel. It's not like you're running a 15 right. and really squatting down on it. It's yeah. like it, it probably got a lot closer than many other, yeah. Yeah, we were lucky in that wow. that it, it you know, that part of it. And I could switch it to, to kilometers. Yeah. <laughs> that was the other thing. I was like, oh God, how do we get through the menus to get to like kilometers I'm going and German stuff. car, they, they've yeah. got that. Oh, you know, fun fact, if you ever have to put a tow hook into the front of a Cayenne, mm. it's reverse thread. Yep. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It goes the other way. Why is that? I don't know. Because it's German. But, but <laughs> I, it's I, know, I know that. It's just not from, because it's German. I don't know. That's just because it's, it's weird. It's reverse thread. I wonder why that is. The only time we had to get pulled out was at the finish line at a place called Pirate's Cove, which is along the Colorado River. And they had put this finish line in the sand on this beach right next to the river. And I was like, I was not aired down. I was like, I know I'm going to get stuck this sec- in a second. So <laughs> Nina Barlow was nice enough to t- tug us out. But like, I mean, we, we ended up rescuing a couple people, um, pulling people out in the dunes, but um, we never got stuck. Nice. Um, even running on 10 pounds of pressure. In the dunes, didn't break beads. So. That's amazing. Nice. I'm like. So more off roading is in your future, I think. Yes, I definitely feel like it is. So um, smog that truck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, an F two fifty. Or lift the you Miata. Do it. You go slowly off road. I can, yeah. I, I'll talk to Emmy and lift the Miata. Off road sports yes. car. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she's she got an off road Miata, doesn't she? She does. Yeah. She's actually. I know she's doing a bunch of races with it. Um, Buddy the Miata. Was it like rally cross? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, she's actually doing like. Uh, like desert stuff. Oh, really? I don't even know. That she's. Was... I think she said she was. She's going to the Baja 100 to like cover it, or 1000, whatever the heck it is. Gosh, why can't I? Think it looks it? good. A little yeah, NB. Thing. Oh my god. Looks she has nice. a bikini so, top for reminds it. Reminds me cool. of my 911. So cool. Yeah, that rules. They Follow well. Emmy. She's amazing. She's yeah, incredible. she's been on the show. I mean, all has been on the show with uh, Lynn Woodward, I think, last year. They were huge helps, too. And that's the other part of it is, like, they were tremendous helps for us this year for the rally. Because they they kept being like, no, no, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. And I was like, I don't know what that means. (laughs) It's like, you can tell me I'll be fine. but I. And then you were fine. And then I was fine. Yeah, it's worked out. But it was really great because there was one point, the first night, Emmy came up and was like, how you doing? And I just looked at her and I was like, is it always this hard? (laughs) She was like... Well, this was kind of an easy day, and I was oh, like, "Oh shit. no!" Because Beth was sick, and I was worried about her, and then I was scared, and you know, all this stuff. And she just gave me a hug. She's like, "You'll be fine. It'll be okay." Had you camped a lot before this? Yeah, I've camped. Okay. I've camped a bunch. So, you get, so that part was easy for you, being uncomfortable stuff. It was more like altitude, off-roading, driving. Okay. Well, it was. I didn't. You know, I worry about Beth and her, like, gnarly. Like, I get migraines, so like, I relate to like mm-hmm. feeling real bad. Um, and was really worried about that. And then I was I was worried about damaging the car. I was worried about having to change a tire. You know, we hadn't we had the car all of I think I had two weeks with it total. So, you know. Not entirely familiar with it. No, it wasn't my you know, it wasn't yeah. my vehicle and I'm lucky enough to get it and have Porsche. Yeah, you don't want to break press cars. No. And I mean on training I did stuff the nose into a dune. Nice. Accidentally. Well It's okay, those are soft. Yeah. Mm, Mm. Oh, no, okay. I broke some sensors, <laughs> and they replaced the radiator because. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh shit! I, you know, oh. but I mean, I told them from the get-go, like, you know, expect expect some damage. We yeah. pulled off a bunch they of the sound. They know what you're doing. Yeah, we pulled off a bunch of the sound deadening stuff underneath, you know, on rocks and stuff. Um, but they fixed it, and it was great. I mean, Ruby Arcayan was freaking phenomenal. 
like amazing. We they're slept probably, in it. They'll probably trucks. make a real good deal for you on that thing now. <laughs> yeah. Well, the amount of sand that's in it is going to be an issue because yeah. it has those really, it has like a red interior, which is why we call it a ruby. And it has perforated leather seats. Oh, they're just full of sand now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. He'll never but be clean again. I'm really stoked. She's going to go on display at um, uh, the Porsche Experience Center in Atlanta. Oh, good. Um, in all her dirtiness. Nice. That's now. Well, now it's it's going to be period dirt. <laughs> yeah. You ever see those fucking rally cars there in play? It's like period dirt. Porsche do not wash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had to tell the fleet guys when they came and picked her up. I'm like, I know she looks rough. I'm like, just don't wash her. Yeah. And they're like, what? I'm like, no, seriously. They're like, you just made our detailers day. I was yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> I was yeah, like, for I can sure. imagine. Uh, Zach, do we have anything from the people from uh, from last show? We had a list, didn't we? We got we have one specifically for Abigail, and then we have some leftover yeah, some car general stuff. car yeah. questions. Okay. All right, let's get let's go to the people. Uh, Dan says, Abigail, your depth and breadth of work is amazing. You've been awarded two Emmy Awards at Peabody and others. Thanks for the resume, Dan. Wow. Uh, Which one is most meaningful to you, and how did those awards help expand your opportunities? So I would say the the two Emmys I got were part of a collective that we did. Um, We were doing, we were covering... um, Education in America, and then uh, an immigration series that we did. Um, that was a total team effort. Um, I actually haven't won a Peabody, but oh. um, I have made that one I up. would love to win a Peabody. <laughs> um, in terms of awards and accolades, um, stuff that actually means stuff to me, um, truthfully, is actually being part of this is really silly, but. World Car Awards, World Car Dury, mm-hmm. is kind of cool because you're nominated by your peers. Um, and so having people believe in you, like I said at the beginning, like all of a sudden finding this community of people who are like, you're actually kind of rad and you like have stuff to say and like you kind of get this stuff. And that to me was was tremendous. Being nominated for the World Car Award Dury was really cool. That's nice. Yeah. No one's asking us to do that shit. <laughs> I don't know why. Because <laughs> we're because we suck. No, you don't. We did performance car of the year at Road and Track, which is a which is yeah. a good one. Because then you actually get to drive cars on the racetrack. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good. One. And I'm not a big racetrack car driver. Like I'll do it, and I know I you know I'm. Well, yeah, we saw you at the track for Lambo it's STO. Pokey, pokey, pokey. But that was okay. Mm-hmm. I Whatever. was like, you know, that's the thing. Like I don't go into these things thinking I have something to prove. Sure. I that's, just I'm not a race car driver. That's I'm a, okay. I'm a pro journalist. You don't I can have to do. Be. I can be that. <laughs> you don't have to be a race car driver. Most of the customers aren't pro race car drivers. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I'm um, always here to learn stuff. So for sure. But that was very nice. Thank you, Dan. Uh, okay, we've got uh, Jose says uh, I'm looking into getting my next car. I have a a six a 600 horsepower uh, 340 BMW X Drive. And I'm looking to either get an Audi RS3 or a new Supra. I've driven a Supra, but not the RS3. I do autocross here and here, here and there, but mainly hit the highway. Um, he's six foot four. He feels six foot he fits four. In both. Uh, I would get. I'd much rather have an RS3 than the Supra. That's what I would say. Yeah, the, I would say that. Supras. It's tight. Don't interest me. Yeah, I mean, even if you can fit in it. Yeah. The roof comes down, so you have to duck to see out of it. Yeah. And they're not, I just don't think they're all that fun. Whereas the RS3 with that five cylinder has real like rally heritage. It sounds really cool, incredibly tunable. You got a back seat. Yeah. And you have a a nicer place to spend your time. It's kind of like the car he has, but it's starting from a better platform. It's like a better jumping off point for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And especially if he's talking about racetrack and stuff, I mean, being able to go from the road to the track is really kind of. Nice yeah. in yeah. something that's comfortable because the Supra is is great and it's fantastic on the road, but you have to have like if you're planning to be with other people, you have to plan to be like, hey, would you like to get beaten up for the next forty five <laughs> minutes? How do you feel about that? That cool with you, Brad? Let's do that. Yeah, I liked the Supra until I drove other things. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, this is it's, not gone. Well. I mean, it's okay. It's fine. it's fine, it's but fine. the RS three is really cool. Yeah, I really yeah. like the RS three. Uh, Matt oh. Cheseldine. If a, if Matt and Zach, if a fan recognizes you in public, what is the preferred way of saying hi, or would you rather be left alone? Gosh. Say hi. Yeah. Just say hi. Just say hi. <laughs> Ask a, if you have a question. We're open to that. Yeah. Just, you know, sometimes the linger longer can be awkward. Here's what you shouldn't do. You probably shouldn't expect us to drive a whole conversation. We don't know you as well as you know us. Yeah. If you have questions, ask them. And we can talk, but like, there's people who look at me like real awkwardly, like, I, like I'm supposed to like 
say a whole bunch of other things. And I'm like, dude, I, you're like a stranger. What do you want me to do? Like, I'm sorry. But yeah, say hi. Well, and the other consideration too is like when people recognize you, he's like, sometimes you're tired. Sometimes like you're in the middle of a conversation with your mom in the car or yeah, something yeah, yeah. and you're just like, I'm really sorry. Like now is not the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of got like, we all have lives. No, if people say if that. people say hi, I will always I will always yeah. chat for a second. Yeah, always. Of course. The the weird one is if they send you a, a message on Instagram or an email, like a voice message, and you too. respond, Ooh, you, you know you it's a question messages? or whatever. You respond. They send you something and you respond, and they send a follow up and you respond to that, and then they thank your best friends, ah. and then they send you just fucking barrages of stuff. Yeah, and it's like. Hang on there. Hold on a second. You know, and then you kind of have to slowly back away. Yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> Wait, Zach, I have a funny story. You mm -hmm. probably don't remember this. I'm going to like surprise you I with know something. I don't because my oh, memory boy. is garbage. <laughs> so back when I was still at CNN, this is going back now like eight, maybe ten years. Okay. I don't know. We actually connected on Words with Friends and you used to kick my ass on what? Words with Friends. And... I did I think, used to play that a lot. I think you stopped playing it because I was so bad at it. <laughs> at least with me. And it was You I, probably internalized that. Yeah, I, did. Did. I, just, I, totally I did. I probably was no, eating, because using I was way really... too much of my time on Words with Friends because I was playing a lot of people at once. I figured. But you were very good at it. Wow. Well, that's, that's did we a connect random. randomly through Words with Friends or was it like your friends from Facebook? I think it was a friends of a friend or something. Holy I don't even shit. remember how that happened. I don't um, remember that at all. If you I still want to play that. Scrabble adjacent games on your phone, you should connect with my wife. Oh, really? Uh, my wife she'll make a, you feel my bad. My wife will, oh. <laughs> is in, incredibly dominant at Scrabble <laughs> awesome. games. She fucks people Did she actually go up. to competitions? Yes. Yes, she did. <gasps> yes, she did. Wow. Yeah. Does she that's know weird. all 57 two-letter words that you can play in Scrabble? Yes, she does. That's amazing. Yeah, she is a destroyer. I think I played Words Friends with her twice. Twice. Yeah. And, so, wow. And I was out. Like, I tried, and I. It's shameful. <laughs> it's fucking so shameful. Well, I learned a lot so from you, but I lost a lot. <laughs> I think I. Lo I think I never won once. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, speaking of random DMs, that's sorry. That's random. funny. Wow, that's funny. <laughs> uh, Paul Morrow is buying a 2022 Audi RS6. Good choice. Excellent car. Considering changing the stock wheels and tires, going from a 275 35 21 to a 315 30 21. With 315 fronts, will tram lining be a big concern? Sure will. Yeah. Yes, it will. <laughs> tram lining, you're going to fuck your car up. Uh -huh. Why would, you don't, don't need do that, that car. Don't no. do that. You will, you uh, will mess Paul, up your you will ruin that car. Mm -hmm. Best case scenario, it'll tram line like crazy. Worst case scenario, you're going to smoke your all-wheel drive system. Yep. Yeah. Don't do don't do that. Nope. We just had the RS7, basically the same car. Yeah. And I thought it rode great. Yeah. Around yeah. town. It was fine in the canyons. Like you don't need you don't need three fifteens. And it's not like in a it's in a hundred and thirty thousand dollar Audi, it's not like the company has made a ton of compromises to keep costs down. Yep. Like in a, with a with you know like a, a Mustang has to be everything to everybody, right? And so you can narrow the focus of a Mustang by changing some things. And Ford knows that people are going to do that, and they make it okay. Mm -hmm. But when it's an all-wheel drive car, changing fucking tire like a drastic change in your tire size is going to fuck your shit up. Don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. I had an experience, actually. I used to own a BMW uh, X3 forever ago. I leased it. My long story. Anyway, I went to, this is a typical like woman experience, I guess. You walk, go into the dealer and you're like, hey, I need all these things done. I was getting ready to sell it. And I was like, you know, it needs new tires. And he's like, well, I looked at it. It only needs two two new rears. And I was like, mm-hmm. Really? So how much would that save me? Because I was like, I'm going to go along with this yeah, yeah, yeah. and see what happens. He's like, oh, it'll, you know, you'll save $800 or whatever the heck it was. And I was like, okay, cool. Thanks. I'll take my keys. I left. I actually sent a message to the, the dealer and I was like, hey, FYI, this is happening and you need to know it because it will mess people people's cars up so badly. Yeah. Um, you don't want mismatched tires on no, all-wheel drive cars. All-wheel drive cars. Don't do that. Don't it's do bad. that. Don't do that. I have people ask me about that kind of stuff a lot. Hmm. Can they? Can I just do these tires or the fronts aren't worn? It's like, no, you, I'm sorry. You bought you an all-wheel drive car. You, you have to. They have to be uniform. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't make that rule. No. Nate just bought a Lexus GSF. The wheels could use some stance. What are the negative impacts of wheel spacers? Same... Same thing, you know, a Lexus GSF is a really well-engineered sedan. 
Um, those those guys know what they're doing. I I, I just I wouldn't. You're just going to ruin it. You're just going to make it drive worse. Yeah, and the ride's going to be rougher. You're yeah. going to have. I mean, you may have. It may feel like it grips a little better or whatever. You may feel like you widens the track. Like it, yeah. it can be beneficial, but depends on the wheel. Depends right. on the offset. It depends on the car. You might have so rub. Yep. And then right, it might yeah. change your scrub radius. Yep. It might. You know. It. it, it it, it could it, it could be bad. Do a lot of things to your suspension. Like, yeah, mm. you you could be putting more stress on your wheel studs. Yep. Potentially, like I just that's wouldn't. true. You make that lever longer. Uh, yeah. You just I don't know. Just do your homework on it, and I'm guessing there's not a lot of homework on wheel spacers on, well, on GSFs on like the actual handling dynamics. Yeah. That's a great car. It is a great I, car. It's probably just more of like people like to cruise around and park and stuff. Yeah. I, I I just wouldn't. And if you and if and, and there's like there's 10 mil, which is pretty small. Yeah. But if this guy's, I mean, if he's talking about 20, 30, 40 to try to make it look all stretched, like that is gonna put a lot of wear on every all the parts. Yeah. Yeah. I, just, I mean, if you do it, expect to spend a lot of money fixing things. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. this question got asked. He re-asked it he in did. the McKeel show. We can get rid of that one. Uh, John Lynch, after watching the U.S. Grand Prix which is my favorite race on a new circuit on the calendar. I was wondering if any of you were there or watched on TV, what you thought of the championship. Uh, we were not there. Did you watch the race? I didn't, actually. Yeah, us either. It seems like it's kind of the place to be now. Yeah. It seems like a lot of our friends have went down there and had a good time. Yeah. And I heard the surface was a disaster. Yeah. Well, I heard the track is settling and the surface sucks. Yeah. They're going to have problems. Um, yeah. What happens when you build a track on a swamp? Yeah. Just saying. Just saying. Um, I mean, look, I, I think uh, I like what um, F1 is doing in general with the, the the social media, the accessibility, Drive to Survive is made. I, I'd rather just wait for the next season of Drive to Survive than watch any of the races. Do you races. see a statistic, though, that the attendance at the race was up was like huge. 90% yeah. or yeah. something like that? Yeah. It was almost a 2x from last yeah. time, and probably it's, someone called it the Netflix effect. Well, someone, I read a story... I, th- I believe it was yesterday. I don't remember if it was on Jalopnik or it was, somebody wrote a really good story about is it the Netflix effect or is it all these other things? Um, and it was. It seems like it's a combination of that. Um, the was it five years ago? Some media company took over yeah. the running of form and they changed all this shit. They changed how much social media the teams are allowed to do. They changed how the races are shot. In, in video, how they're covered. They changed all this stuff that has uh, affected the total, the total. They changed, um, they want the race weekends to be, to have a quote, music festival vibe. Mm-hmm. Hmm. You know, they want it to be a party around the racing and not just a, a race. And I think that all those things are, are working. Well, they're taking the, their page from NASCAR, right? Probably. You know? I mean, it yeah. is a party that you go and watch cars drive around a circle. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, F1, the like I've been to the F1 track in Austin, um, and that's a neat space, neat place to be. Um, but at the time, to your point, it was like very badly attended and, you know, Coda is or had been in sort of dire straits financially and stuff. So um, I'm excited by the fact that people are getting into it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it's cool. Um, I think we're in a weird time and space where, the more people we have like into cars, the better we are. I you mean, know? Drive to Survive made my girlfriend give a shit about F1. Really? She had never watched it. And then we watched, she came home and I was watching the first episode of uh, whatever, season three. Mm-hmm. And she watched one and she just looks at me, she's like, could we watch another one? And we did three <laughs> in a row. And then the next night we watched the next three. And then wow. she's going to go back and do the other seasons. because. And I think then the, uh, the effect is it makes people who didn't care about the sport more they'll see that's the content on Instagram or whatever and then they actually want to pay attention to it instead right. of just breezing past it so yeah the, the cumulative effect is awesome yeah and, I mean it makes the it also the the main motorsport coverage doesn't focus on mid pack teams and stuff and no. and and so having those quote B stories um, be something to root for you know who I whoever would have heard of George Russell? You know what I mean, or, or you know, any of those, those those guys. Yeah. Um, and also uh, another thing is that whatever the the rules are regarding the the cars, that they are the the performance envelopes of the cars is tighter than it was seven or eight years ago. Now, so the races are a little more competitive. Well, and like that's a big part of sort of both like off roading and racing and and sort of those coverages is like. 
unless you're a person that has experienced it firsthand, it's really hard to give context mm-hmm. to what that feels like physically, yeah. Yeah. mentally, yeah. emotionally, all of that. And until you have a good story or compelling characters that you can hook into, y- you know, you don't have any sort of thing to to make that stuff more right. interesting. Right. Um, and to understand what the extremes that we're, you know, people are pushing their bodies to, people are pushing their minds to, people are pushing these machines to. Mm-hmm. Um, and that in and of itself, that drama, if you will, is like the compelling part of it, yeah, I think. Yeah, totally. Uh, Hunter Sands, what do you prefer in a collection? Something like Zuckerman and Spike? Well, first off, this question is based in false premise. <laughs> Something like Zuck, I'll read it and then I'll correct it. Something <laughs> like Zuckerman and Spike, where it's not too many cars and they're well taken care of and turnkey ready, or one like Jay, where he has seemingly everything and not all of his vehicles are drivable. Two false premises here. One, Spike and Zuckerman between them have probably 25 cars. So if you call 25 cars, quote, not too many cars, your vision of reality is a little off. (laughs) And Jay has 120 cars, and I would say 80% of them are drivable. Almost everything that's not taken apart in a state of restoration is is good to drive. For me, I I don't have time for even four or or five. I, I I have five, and yeah. one is the one that we drive. <laughs> yeah. So, like, let's be honest. No, I think I want I think I want a, a daily driver car, a, a modern sports car, and a vintage sports car. And I could call the game right, and, and a motorcycle yeah. of some kind. And I can call the game right there. I don't have time to take care of more shit than that. No, no, and the the time and money. I mean, we talk about like our dream vehicles, right? I would be like. A G550. I don't want the 63. I want the G550. You don't need the 550, yeah. Or the 63. The 63, yeah. yeah. I don't want the, I, you know, I want a yeah. Camaro ZL1. Like, Those you are know. Nice. Yeah. And then, fun. then I want something, you know, that's like maybe, I don't know, a Chevy Bolt. Like something that's like totally opposite, that, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But like that would be it for my yeah. collection. I think, I feel like, you know, the dreams can expand based on your bank account because <laughs> at a certain point, if you just, if you just like, uh, like we're talking to Keel and he has, Seems like a more modest collection than um, like Spike or Jay, but he has one kind of for each occasion or mood yeah. without having too many redundancies or overlaps, which sure. makes sense. But I think it'd be easy if you like, I like hot rods and like I could have, you know, a gasser one and a Nova and a this and a this because they all speak to me a little bit differently. You know, you could go down that hole if you had the bank account for it. Yeah, yeah totally. You need to have extensive resources to really yeah. have time and money and space. Cars. Yeah, <laughs> and space. Oh my uh, God, space. GG is upgrading from his R56 John Cooper Works Mini to a Mercedes uh, NAC63. So the a couple of years ago, or an E92 M3. Which would you take? Mm, mm. Hundred miles a week, mainly on A and B roads in the UK. I'm a mechanic, so maintenance is no issue. I'd probably have a really nice M3 sedan with a manual transmission. Yeah, that's what I'd do. I'd go for the M3. Yeah, M3 sedan, manual transmission. I mean, the C63 is really good, but I just really like the M3. Yeah. <laughs> the, the M3 just turns better, especially yeah. back in that generation. Yeah. And if he's coming out of a mini JCW, like yeah. he clearly likes a little bit of Apex G-Force. Yep. Yeah. Uh, HUD, do you think Ford will go out with the Mach-E variants, GT500, Shelby, Bullet, etc.? I hope they don't do a bullet. Boy, would that be stupid, wouldn't it? But they would, The though. bullet, they would. I mean, they totally would. They would, because the fucking... <laughs> you think they will? You think, because, I mean, that's an interesting thing, because the, the, the generation that likes that movie right. and knows what it is might be the, also the generation who's like, how dare they call this a Mustang? Yeah. I've never driven an electric car. So that maybe they'll finally, maybe the Mach-E will do what we've all been hoping for, which it takes the Mustang away from Bullet and finally, maybe. you know, they go their separate you know what ways. I, I like S H E L B dash E. Shelby. Shelby. I, I like that. And yeah. Shelby doesn't own the copyright to that, which Ford right? probably enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like bonus. Yeah. Yeah. I think when it comes down to it, it's going to be a combination of accounting and demand, you know? I, I think mean, they'll definitely have one that's faster yeah. than the current GT. Yeah. And I would really, I'd, I think, I would, the, my dream Mach E would have the. Which someone in my in my Twitter said they should call LX, which I like, would have the 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 GT's mag ride and seats, but the uh, but be rear wheel drive instead of all wheel drive and have the the long range battery. That would be my oh, perfect. Oh yeah, monkey. that's like the sweet spot. Yeah. That would be perfect. Yeah. But again, then you know, it's Ford. It's just. What does that I mean, mean? They might eventually. <laughs> they I mean, they out. might eventually, but they're going to be. It's like very slow moving. Yeah. yeah. Very like. Yeah. 
laborious to get there and you're just like can we can we just please give us what we want like well it's also i mean there might be people going how come ford doesn't have a a mock e plaid and then right. for ford it's like because we don't need one right we can't make the business case for it like yeah that's not us I, and i know Von we Gilles don't doing the we videos. don't plan on selling the same car for 12 years and needing <laughs> needing to find yeah. new ways to yeah. make it interesting they wanted, you know they're, they're testing that tech with von gitten and uh, the 1400 horsepower whatever it's called and that new video if you haven't seen it is incredible oh, the pharaoh Holy islands shit. thing yeah it's it cool awesome yeah, it's really cool. Um, but I, I can't see them making it for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, S. Snare. Snare. Uh, do you have high hopes for the upcoming electric Porsche Cayman Boxster models, or is the NA Flat 6 Plus manual unbeatable? Can't I have both? Does it yeah. have to be? Does it have to be one or the other? Choose a team. <laughs> I mean, there's not a Wait, lot of communist? sports cars out there that are better than a Boxster Spider with a manual gearbox. Yeah. I mean, not a lot. No. And so I hope that. They don't abandon that in order to make an electric sports car. I don't think they I think I, I think they're going to ride that one out because people still want that stuff. Um, at the same time, I think if they build an electric sports car, it'll probably be really fun. Well, and that's the thing. Like the I was in the Cross Turismo. The um, oh my gosh, Tycon. There we go. Mm-hmm. Thank you, the Tycon. That thing. Mm-hmm. It rips. So freaking good. Yeah, it rips. And like Porsche does their stuff right. They're not going to sacrifice their core audience, which is, you know, the the enthusiasts who are about the manual spiders and, you know, about the, the Boxster and the Carrera. Um, they're not going to abandon that for electric. They are going to move that way, mm-hmm. but they're not going to be like, bye guys, see ya, mm-hmm. sink or swim. This is where we're going now. Bye. They're going to they're gonna get everybody yeah. involved in that. Yeah. Uh, two more, and then we're getting out of here. Jordan Klein says, uh, is the demand meaning the demand 4.5 liter engine upgrade, likely the better streetcar versus the GT4 RS on paper, recognizing you haven't driven the GT4 RS. Of course, because the demand engine adds a shitload of power to the same, you, you know, the same thing that's there. The 4 RS, in order to, because 4 RS, a couple things, one will be PDK only, no stick, so that's a problem. It'll be hard top only, so you won't be getting a Boxster Spider RS probably. Just came in. Uh, you and also the things that'll make it better on the track could potentially make it worse to drive on the street. Stiffer suspension, um, less sound deadening, uh, potentially wider wheels and tires that might make it darty. I mean, I'd rather drive a regular GT3 on the street than a GT3 RS. Uh, so I, I think that would be the same. This, of course, is a judgment without driving it. But if you ask me if I'd rather have in a Boxster the tires, downforce, and weight reduction to take 20 seconds off the Nurburgring time or 150 horsepower and 100 pounds of torque and the same chassis setup, give me that fucking motor. Yep. I will take the motor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Luke Taylor, last question. How much do you think car journalists need to educate themselves on kilowatt versus kilowatt hours and other EV technical details outside of press launch conversations? I actually think it's really vital, honestly. I think it's really important. If we can't understand it ourselves, then we can't talk about it and we can't make it you know, understandable to the public. Mm-hmm. And that's part of our job. I think that's really important. I think understanding just the under, the, we understand how engines work, right? We understand how transmissions work. We, we get that stuff because we've studied it. As the world makes this transition to electrification, we have to understand how that works too. Yeah, We can't just be like, mm, it's like ish, kilowatt hour-ish, I think, I don't know, whatever, who cares? Meh, you're calling it I in. Admit, I would in. admit the jargon is more confusing. It is. It, it, it just is. I was not good at my, I did a year of engineering in school before I left and did art. Um, and I could not keep up with the, um, scientific units of current amps and volts mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And how they convert and all yeah, that. Yeah. I had a really hard time with it. So like, um, you know, I do my best. I'm certainly not perfect. And I do know the difference between kilowatts and kilowatt hours. Um, uh, one is a method, measure of power and one is a measure of battery storage. Thank Very you. Good. But, um, you know, I think um, we need to educate ourselves, but also the super nerds out there need to be a little more forgiving when people don't get it exactly right. Yeah, that's very true. Because (laughs) we've been going a certain direction for a while, the changeover is rapid, 
and um, it's you know it literally is learning a new science. Um, and so, you know, if we fuck up once in a while, you know, it's not uh, kind of some slack. Yeah. Well, and like if you think about like all the different kinds of powertrains out there, if you're talking about hydrogen, like explaining how a hydrogen how hydrogen goes from you know, a compressed gas through a, some sort of process to come out as water in a vehicle is like, that's complicated. Yep. Yeah. And to do it in a way that's not... Just the process of fueling a hydrogen car is oh, complicated. It's complicated. <laughs> yeah. I was afraid I was going to like blow up or something when I did it for the first time. I was like, this is terrifying. I was afraid of that. I was just... Zach got stranded at the Harris Ranch for two days. Oh, God. Yeah. Waiting for yeah, a hydrogen for truck. For a truck. Well, and that's the thing, especially mm-hmm. here in Southern California. They just don't have the, they're yeah. not full. No. You're like, well, it says it's full. And then you get there and you're like, no, it's not. Yeah. And it's, it's just not. a freestanding tank. It's, it's not yep. good. No. It's not a good, it's not great. Not a good system. Uh, thanks for coming in, man. Yeah. It's so nice to have you. Thank you. I'm so glad I got to see that Volvo. I have enjoyed the heck out of it. <laughs> yes, my Volvo is is a thing. You will see it around. Uh, because Abigail is freelance, she writes and does stuff for a whole bunch of different people. Um, yep. You can find the collective at abigailbassett.com. We will link it in our thing. And, of course, on the socials, Instagram, Twitter, all the places. Yep. Um, what do you got coming up? Anything interesting? Um, I actually don't have anything super interesting right this moment, although I had some messages this morning about covering LA Auto Show and LA Auto Show is coming, isn't I know, it? Yeah, I know. yeah. I think we're gonna be out of town for that one. Are you? Mm. Oh no. <laughs> we're going to SEMA though, so we've got our oh, we've got our fun. convention week. You'll actually be here. I will be at the oh, really? whatever that launch oh, you'll is be in at Sonoma. Uh, oh the Hyundai. Hyundai N. The I'll Sonata N. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be here, but I'm doing the Civic SI Ooh, that's in fun. Malibu, which I'm... New Civic videos do really well for us. The SI is really... I mean, the old one, previous one was really was cool. good. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, good to drive. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, excited for Integra. Yeah, I'm actually ready that'll for, be fun. ready for that Integra life. That'll be fun. Yeah. Well, um, but yeah, I don't have a lot. I do a lot more kind of electric cars and stuff. Like I drove the Lucid and... Oh, yeah, the Lucid. Um, which was pretty cool. Yeah? Yeah. Fast? It's neat. I, it is fast. Um, I personally just don't love the design, the exterior design. I think it's a little bit of like a bubble car. It is a bit of a mind. bubble car. Yeah. It's um, a bit of a globule. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the technology that they use to like regenerate the power and like store it and stuff is really fascinating. And I really think the company has something to it in that it's like definitely not doing the tech bro aspect like it's not like we're just gonna like you know beta test on the entire american people you know they're like no 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 no. we have our ducks in a row and we're gonna actually make this stuff work oh, that's good um which is really cool and they're actually like a very serious legit car company we did like a factory tour and like they have their shit together i've been trying to get to drive one lucid people can you fucking get at me please i'd really <laughs> like to have a go you should let matt drive in the meantime you can check out abigail's review yeah Thanks for coming in. Thank you. So great to have you. AbigailBassett.com for all the things. And it's TechCrunch is your Lucid piece? Yeah, TechCrunch. Lucid Lucid is on TechCrunch, um, as is my Lamborghini stuff. Amazing. Well, we'll be uh, be podcasting from SEMA uh, all next week. We got four shows we're doing over there. Yep. And uh, it should be fun if we don't get COVID. You won't get COVID. We probably, probably won't get COVID. Probably. Masks on, baby. Masks on. Yeah. Behind Lexan, behind Lexan barriers. Yeah, it's gonna be fun though. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm eligible for my booster when I get back. Oh. Right when I get back. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm yeah. not yet eligible. I, May, uh, November, November, I can get them. Yeah, yeah. I'm that shit. I'm hoping to get one before the holidays, before I fly home. Yeah, Team so. Moderna, baby. Yeah, <laughs> love that shit. I'm all about my Team Moderna. Yes. All right, that's yes. our show. Thank you to our patrons for submitting their questions, and uh, we will talk to all of you from Las Vegas Whoop. next week. Bye.